in the evening. Yep. It's that time again, y'all. Well, Wagwan and uh, Marco. 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 And Nihao. Nihao. And Shishi and God did. Obama. To everyone, we're back. Um, not at the same time. Thanks, Marco. But at a different time, an afternoon time. Why? Because, well, first of all, thumbs up the stream, right? Thumbs up the king. Because it's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend, and boy, did that sneak up on me. Boy, oh boy. Tomorrow is, sorry, Monday is actually Thanksgiving Day, but probably most people are going to be doing their Thanksgiving dinners and stuff this weekend. And it just, oh shit, I got to reply to my grandma too. It just sort of snuck up. It just sneaks up on you, doesn't it? It just sneaks up on you. Um, yeah. By the way, Silica Valley, what up? Um, check your Discord messages because I sent you a very funny meme on Instagram, but I know you don't really use Instagram, so I thought I would mention it here. This is like a month ago now. Uh, what's up, everybody that's in the chat? All my members. Yeah, where? Let me give it up for the members. Let me give it up for the members. Let me give it up. Oh, somebody gifting memberships too? Om Prakash Swain gifting memberships. Thank you for that, Om Prakash Swain. Mythic, Shifter, Violetta, uh, Jimmy Moon, Benjamin. Man. I take responsibility. Exactly. Thank you for that. Appreciate you guys. Giselle. Giselle got the membership. We'd love to see it. You know... Hey, thank you, Brandon, for ordering this shirt. I saw that come up on my phone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We need the support. We definitely need the support because we're a small grassroots organization. That's what we are here at Always Marco on YouTube. We're a small grassroots organization that is... Uh, I take responsibility. Thank you, Benjamin. Constantly facing, uh, facing threats. It's been a very stressful past few days. which I still can't talk about. What up, David? And uh, boy, Wednesday night, we had to end the stream early, didn't we? And now we're back. And now this is a regular stream. That was supposed to be a makeup stream, and then that got cut short. Wish I could, wish I could explain, but you know, no, expl no explanation needed for the new video that came out today. I said it was going to be called What is a Pyramid Scheme? I decided it's a little more uh, clickable if I titled it the Truth About Pyramid Schemes. So I titled it The Truth About Pyramid Schemes because there's already a very good video out there called How to Spot a Pyramid Scheme or How to Identify a Pyramid Scheme, How to Spot a Pyramid Scheme. Um, this video here, How to Spot a Pyramid Scheme, Stacey Bosley. This is uploaded to TED-Ed and has 5.7 million views. You know what's embarrassing is Stacey Bosley was one of the speakers at this year's MLM conference that I also spoke at. And I have seen that video countless times over the years. And I just never put it together in my, like I forgot that, I forgot that that was her brainchild. Do you know what I mean? I forgot that. And so I would have bigged up, you know, bigged her up on it when I saw her. But then I, I got back home and I was looking into more of her work and I was like, oh fuck, she did this, she made this? I I'm an idiot. I forgot about it. So shout out to Stacey Bosley. Um, but I didn't want to, you know, that's, that's, also a, that's also a really good video. Mine, uh, you know, mine is mine. Mine is me. Mine is me. So definitely go watch the new video that I put out. And uh, yeah. Om Prakash Wayne says, I love when people start their donation with sorry. Like, why would you apologize, bro? I should be, I should be, you know, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm anything but thankful. I mean, I'm only thankful. Om Prakash Wayne says, "Sorry, Marco, I could only gift. W I could gift only one this month due to my company doing my docking my pay because we went on strike for higher pay." Hey, dude, do not apologize. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're the goat, for real. You gifted a membership and uh, and donated, so that's crazy. And everyone's thumbs up in the stream. Thumbs up, free, the king. Right? Everyone's doing that because on my end, I see 65 viewers and only 28 likes. And I get it. It's Saturday afternoon. People are out and about doing things. Uh, Thanksgiving weekend. It's whatever. This also, this is the longest that I've been out of the gym in all year, actually. 
because I, I haven't been in almost two weeks because I was sick. I think actually two weeks. I was sick as a dog for well over a week. Couldn't even, <clears throat> couldn't even fathom going outside. Practically bedridden. And uh, so I didn't go. And then these past few days have just been... I'm on my Jason Bourne shit right now. I don't know what to tell you. I can't tell you. Can't tell you too much. So, but we're gonna get back in there and get things back on track. And the new video is out. The new video is out. Silicon Valley, you said you just updated your 2012 MacBook Pro for the first time in probably four years. My, I still have my 2012 MacBook Pro. She's still going strong, but yeah, the writing's on the wall. David, what up? Benjamin, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thumbs up the ting. Also, if this stream crashes, it's either the Illuminati getting me. Or it is uh, because my computer has been unreliable and crashing randomly recently, and I don't know what it is. And so my cousin who, thank you, my cousin who knows more about computers than me has advised me that I might need to get some new RAM for my computer, random access memory so that my computer can handle a heavier workload or handle whatever is causing it to, to crash. So if you want to help me with that, Streamlabs link in the chat, spitting. Let's go and pick up where we left off on, on Wednesday and check out what is going on with our friends Igor and Andrea in this video, which is called Visit the Home of Igor and Andrea. This is the thumbnail. Seems to be like an auto-generated thumbnail. Anyways, let's check it out. This, by the way, this is actually the video that I was building up to the entire time, the entire last stream. I was building up to this, and then we got cut short, which is unfortunate. So if you're watching the replay on this, which I assume many of you are, enjoy. Wow. House of Dreams. Benvenuti nella casa dei sogni. This is the House of Dreams and it fits perfectly to what we do. We are making the fortunes in multi-level marketing, especially in the area of the cryptocurrency with one life, one coin. We are. Oh, this is when he was still in one coin, so he's bigging it up. Oh my god, this is gonna be so bad. Area of the cryptocurrency with one life. One coin, and this house reflects that multi level idea because it's a house with eight different levels. So we have multi levels going up. up. <laughs> multi level housing. It's the newest scam uh, hitting the real estate market. Multi level housing. Can't wait. Up. It has a lot of guest rooms and every angle because we like to invite you to visit us. We like to have visitors. Because are those roosters? No, those are dragons on his shirt. He's very subtle, and so is his wife. Something beautiful is only to enjoy when you can share it. And I believe strongly that when you can share it, it becomes more. You can enjoy it even more. Wow. Hello, hello. So. This is the heart beating part of our house. This is the heart. This is the living room. Wherever we go, we always take some items with us. Over here, we have the, the beautiful uh, bohemian glass from the Czech Republic, Prague. And then we have over here some beauty from Paris. And this is one of the first pieces of art that we bought together, yes. isn't it? Over here, you will see it later in the kitchen, but over here we have some Swarovski. Over here we have the beautiful paintings where we, we were on a cruise. Where yes, did in we? Corfu, in Corfu. Greece. Corfu. And wow. we were Paradise. On, yes, and we saw this and there was an artist and the one. Show, this is the heart of Igor House. Hilarious. One that you see over there. Oh my God. This is one of the pieces. This is the heart beating part. This is the fart meeting part. Bars, bars. Pieces that we saw somewhere. We, we find it and they said we make a table out of it. So we bought this wooden table. Hermes, Versace, the 
pillows so soft. We were in Venice and we saw this beautiful glass uh, statues. Yes. And let's go in our Greek part in the living room. We have the page of Hermes. Here can describe how is my son. And actually it fits perfectly. We have one of the the things that I'm I'm very happy. Wow, look at that fucking chessboard. Was that Rome versus Egypt? Heavy. It is a chess game with uh, the, the Romans, Julius Caesar, and uh, at the other side, it's the Egyptians, Cleopatra. Every piece is made by hand. Whatever you see here represents somewhere in the world. This is another chess game of Louis XIV. Beautiful maquette of a house. London, of course, Amsterdam, where we are from. Barcelona, I Barcelona, love it. It's one magic. of the most. It literally looks like an antique store, like a secondhand, like, uh, what you know, what do you call that? Like a thrift store, you know? Beautiful cities in. Yeah, d dust collectors, exactly. Literally. What up? Uh, oh, we're getting more people in here now. Come on, 100 people watching, only 53 thumbs ups. Guys, thumbs up the team. Thumbs up the team. We got to thumbs it up. Come on now the world some people believe in magic other people don't believe in it but over here we have the pieces from uh, the movie of Harry Potter this is uh, the staff we have Dubai Curaçao, Curaçao Caribbean Japan and one of my favorite is Mexico that's Thailand over there we have Thailand this is it. chessboard Israel versus Palestine <laughs> So funny. Italy, we have Italy here, Paris. Paris, this is the eastern part of Europe. Hungary, Ukraine, Russia, places where we are, where we, every time we bought. Here we have Malta, and there we have Athens. Over there is Turkey, Istanbul, Croatia, Australia, Germany. This is what happens when you have money, but you just don't know what to do with it. Like, this is like what the poorest of the poor person's idea is of being wealthy, is just having a bunch of little stupid knickknacks laying around the house. Meca and Panama. This is our network, ladies and gentlemen. This is our network. This is your network? These inanimate objects? All right, bet. This is the team, the 250,000 people that we have worldwide. They represent the countries that you see here. something new and something old over here. When you look at this, it's a beautiful story. This is what Andrea and I, we bought together. In our kitchen as well, you find a lot of pieces that are coming actually from our travel. This is some cruises that oh we did. God. And over here, I like that very much because this part is a reflection of the art that we oh, love so much. And this God. is actually from one of our most famous cities that uh, we visit, Venice. All those pieces, all the masks, are from Casa Nobile. And you see it's all made with Swarovski pieces. I like to collect those. My favorite, of course, is this one, because it represents Hermes, Igor, and me. And I'm a lion. I'm a mama lion. Lion Kings. Yes. <laughs> yes, the Lion Kings. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Literally, what the fuck? A flea market, that's what it is. Fine China MLM. Dude, this guy could start an MLM literally of any like niche th physical item just with shit that's in his house. Swarovski Crystal MLM. <laughs> Literally, he's a grandmother. He gets pulled over by the police, and they just, like, uh, they put him in cuffs, and they, they search him, and all he has is, like, hard candies on him. Those nondescript strawberry hard candies with no logo on them. It's like, where the fuck did you get this? Same level, level four, we have the boardroom. Haram, Chris, and Lisa. I was thinking that, too, the way she, like, sort of chimes in. <laughs> Evil Chris and Lisa from another dimension, for sure. There's yes. the boardroom. Where the meetings Let's are happening there. and the magic. And here we are. This is my collection of stamps. This is my collection of Russian nesting dolls. In the office. We can have a dinner with 14 people, but as well uh, a dining room. 
they are busy at the moment. We have some uh, friends, some guests over. Fr See if I recognize any of these guys. Insane. From far away, Philomena and Steve Condos from Australia. We have uh, Tang Dong, Vietnam, Australia. And uh, yeah, we have Ali out of Lebanon and uh, living in Dubai. Big businessman interested in our business. <laughs> Big businessman about to get fucked by one coin. Very exciting stuff. And my best friend Jens Christians is sitting here as well. Shout out to Nest Cafe for actually filling up the instant coffee, like the jar, to the brim. Shout out to them. Oh, you thought that was me, Yukari? You thought that Lebanese guy was me? Yeah, close. My cousin, it's my cousin. Then over there you see our cupboard. What we love is really wine. This is one of our hobbies, you know. In Macau we bought this amazing photo that was actually in the uh, office of Sofia. This is one of the most La beautiful Fortuna. that we just collected. Lady Fortuna. So soulless. I actually feel, not, I don't feel bad, but I sort of pity it. Like him flexing all these physical items because like, in the truest, truest sense, this man has something empty within within him, you know, to be wearing. Look at look at his wearing. Look at his wearing right there. Look at the shoes and pants, you know. For this big European guy, old European guy, it's crazy, you know. Also, I, I mentioned this in the last stream about Igor. In Alanda, the recovering Hanbots video about him, she said that he had he has five. He's been married five times and has twelve children. Like, bro, stop, just, the only way out is in, Igor. He need to do, like, some meditation or some something so that he stops running around and trying to, like, fill the void with women and trinkets, you know, and wine. The one thing we, we like is wine. Nah, that is a beautiful one that Andrea find. It's originally from Congo. More expensive to transport it than what it possibly over there originally has cost. I made, a couple of years ago, a vision board. There you go, whoever was asking for the vision board. But I was busy with putting some travel and I ended up putting all travel only on my vision board. Now, I paid the price for that, ladies and gentlemen, because whatever you put on a vision board will become your reality. Everything that is crossed like this means that we are somewhere. Over here. What? Little... Everything we cross means we are somewhere. Huh? Made, making it up. Making it up. Thank you. Hello, my friends donated $20 and said, pull out, Igor. Yeah, no, Igor doesn't know the, mean, the meaning of pull out. He would be redeemable if he's like, here's my art sla studio slash room where I utilize any semblance of pure creation that remains inside me. Yeah, negative. Negative. What up, Alexis? Thank you for being here imprint and people say why don't you move the carpet but you know this boardroom was once the boardroom the office of mr. John the mall and he was sitting actually here when he had the idea of Big Brother the house is amazing and the gardens um, are just amazing it's so nice to wake up in the morning and just walk outside nice peaceful why is she so shiny quiet and Actually, yeah, you you're like in paradise. Yeah, thank you very much, Igor and Andrea, for bringing us this opportunity to be here. If you guys don't do it big, I will do it. I should. If you guys don't do it big, I will do it. Mark, hey everyone. Live from Goon headquarters in scenic Edmonton, Alberta. Big announcement. It's time for Goon News. Big announcement. If you don't do it big, I will do it. Just want you to know that. Suggest that we now go to level number five to our sleeping room because there are some surprises. I think that's the most mesmerizing room of our whole house. Are there really five floors? And we're not even showing you the dungeon. And that you guys, when you finish the board meeting, feel free to play some other pool. Then maybe board meeting. Board meeting. What do pyramid scheme uh, or Ponzi scheme organizers talk about at a board meeting? All right. This is, so you gotta get more people, right? Thank you for that. Uh, Pull hello, out my Igor. Yes. All right, we gotta get more people recruited. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna recruit five people. What are they gonna do? Recruit five people. How about you? Oh, I'm gonna recruit five people too. <laughs> A board meeting. Actually, I wonder about that, about big MLM companies at their meetings. What do they talk about? Keep recruiting. 
you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about like the opportunity meetings. We know what they talk about at those. Oh, your mindset. Did you know about the power of compound interest? What do you believe? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Blah, 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 blah. What do they talk about at the actual highest level of a big MLM company? Like, I'd love to sit in on an Amway executive meeting. You know, I really would. I really would. Maybe at the end of the tour, we will see you at the pool room. Good. Well. Welcome on level five. This is the fifth level. It's the blue diamond level. Let's Jesus Christ, blue diamond. Made it up. Show me the shitter. The board meeting, B-O-R-E-D. Yep. What up, Chloe? Five floors, two upstairs and three basements. <laughs> what up, Mr. Me? Appreciate you. Welcome. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy had <laughs> actual slaves. Man sounds like Professor Frink from The Simpsons, right? Oh, my God. Can't believe this. Poor cleaning woman. No kidding. Board meeting. All right, guys, who discovered a new vulnerability or minor minority group we can exploit this week, right? Say it like that. Hey, the cleaner with the seashells. Y'all are hilarious. The lore building is so funny to me. You know what's not funny to me? The fact that 30 of y'all have not clicked thumbs up on the stream. That's not even close. Thumbs up the ting. It's not even cute to me. His nose takes up a floor. <laughs> We have a lot of items in here that we like personally very much and we don't show that to other people but it's our our love all of like uh, the pegs and gag balls and shit like that alpha mentality what up change your username but uh thank you for the dono he said i felt pressured to join amway by a recruiter and got called a loser when i said no lol wow sorry to hear that alpha mentality uh Joining Amway is definitely not alpha mentality, in my opinion. But uh, you know what is alpha mentality? Not being phased when they call you a loser because you know you're probably making more money than that person. Actually, you are making more money than that person who was trying to recruit you and flex on you. Even if you never make another dollar, you're making more money than that person. So congrats. Good, good that you got out of that. Glad, to, glad that you never got caught up in the first place. Paying the cleaner in crypto zoo eggs. Yep. <laughs> Shows, this is the floor where my nose lives. Oh, got Igor was a kid who uh, his parents did the I got your nose and it dictated the rest of his life. The cleaning lady has to get more cleaning ladies and each additional cleaning lady she gets, she gets a small commission. What up, Joseph? Yeah, doing an early stream tonight because uh, uh, family Thanksgiving thing. The big bosses at board meetings are talking about the same thing at a... A regular corporation does numbers. So true. So true. Example over here. I am a big fan of Disney figures. And you see, those little guys, they are on the way. Hey ho, hey ho. You krijgt niet maar zo. And you know what they are going to do? They are going into the mine. They are going into mining. And that's actually what we do every day. We are every day going into the mines. We work hard and we dig out and we delve the one coins. He's talking about crypto mining, which is sort of not the same, Igor. Sorry to tell you. I take responsibility. Thank you, Alexis. Gifting memberships. Who got the membership? Hope nay. Congratulations, Hope. Uh, oh, wrong button. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. I, this is crazy. <laughs> That's where we sleep. But this is our bed when we sleep sometimes. Huh? Yeah, that looks so that looks so like uncomfortable. There, there's nothing like it's so cold. There's nothing welcoming about this. And the shape of the walls is so weird too. And they got the camera overhead. That's good. The Beauty and the Beast thing is very fitting, but it's like it's just a bunch of sh there's no personal effects. Oh, I guess there's a picture above their bed, but like, yeah, where's the pictures? Where's the kids' stuff? Where's the... It's so open, too open. In the trenches, insane. Uh, yeah, that's another thing I notice MLM people do is uh, you guys remember Austin Godsey from my I Am Academy videos? He is so cringe. To this day, you can go see on his Instagram. 
he, he's going to make an appearance in a future video again, by the way, because uh, he's not with I am anymore. And uh, I'm watching. I see everything. People send me stuff. Uh, but Austin is so so he got people like Forex people got clowned so hard over these past couple years, really the past year, ever since COVID ended and people woke up from like the the crypto and Forex like mania that was going on. All those motherfuckers that were talking about Grand Rising family, Grand Rising. Now Austin, who was the biggest Grand Rising shill ever, is now, guess what he says? This is going to make you cringe, so brace yourself. Now Austin posts on his Instagram every day, Rich Rising. Oh, fuck. Rich Rising family, shut the fuck up. You're such a tool. Rich Rising, everyone. Rich Rising. Dude. And anyways, he would be posting shit like, we're in the trenches. I wish we could, I wish I could be out there on tour, tour, in the trenches. You know what he was talking about? Going and doing opportunity presentations like I Am Academy pitch meetings in different cities. You know, they would do these tours where they would go into different cities across the country or different countries even recruiting people, doing like these, the big, like, uh, I don't know, seminars or whatever, I Am Academy or... Uh, MLM, whatever the company was, big convention type shit. That was him talking about, I'm on tour. And in my first video, uh, you can see how like on his YouTube channel, he has these compilation videos of like him with like motivational quotes on the screen. And it's like him on stage in front of a big group of people, but they don't play the audio from it. They just like slow-mo it when he's coming out. And then add music and talking or, you know, motivational quotes or him voiceovering over it. But it's like, oh, wow, what's this guy do? Is he a rapper? This looks pretty lit. But it's just literally him going up there to be like, would you rather have a million dollars right now or a penny doubled every day for 30 days? Fucking joke, bro. Joke ting. It's crazy. It's crazy that I'm the good guy in this story, right? I'm the, I'm the one doing the right thing to try to like help people not fall victim to pyramid schemes and whatever. But in terms of who is reaping the benefit, the bad guys are reaping the benefit. The bad guys are, are the ones making the ridiculous millions of dollars from recruiting people. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not selling, I'm not selling people on anything. Like, you know what I mean? My success is only dependent on me putting out information that is actually correct and true and accurate and re and actually helps people. You know, my videos only do good if they actually are well researched and help people. Whereas they they get paid if they just weave weave the most intricate web, tell the most lies, tell the most audacious story, live in the most gaudy looking house. It's so backwards cuz I know if I was to use my powers for evil, you know, uh it would be a complete bloodbath. If I was to be in, if I was like in MLM, if I imagine if all those years ago, I had actually joined my best friend in World Financial Group. Imagine. Imagine that. It'd be crazy. Crazy. All right, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Censor those dwarves. They support white supremacy and enforce negative stereotypes. Yeah, I'm not even going to get into that whole thing, but the Disney shit, I, I hope that that, Snow White movie flops like worse than Indiana Jones 5 and all the shit that Disney's had that's been flopping. I they deserve it so badly in my opinion and I and I'm I don't even feel bad about it. Like I'm happy to see that. Go woke, go broke as they <laughs> we, we call it go woke, go broke we call it. That's what we call it. Um you'd be more interested to hear about the Birkin bag Giselle, yeah. UPS furniture outlet. Tacky on tacky on tacky yo. Oh. The kids live with their moms, true. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I mentioned this on the last stream, and one of you guys actually found it in the Discord, which I'm so grateful for. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Hopi Nay. Really appreciate that. Thank Hopi you. The, uh, Hopi Nay, the first person to actually use the Streamlabs link and, and not the super chat that YouTube takes 30% of, which we love to see. Uh, one of you guys actually did find... Now I don't know where you posted it. One of you guys actually did find the Trump clip that I was looking for. I'm going to add this to the stream deck. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, but if you ah, ah, ah. Shh, 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 shh. 
Yeah, but if you become president and you don't like somebody, or if somebody's beating you by 10, 15, or 20 points, like we're doing with crooked Joe Biden, let's indict the motherfucker. Let's indict. <laughs> That's the clip that's going on the stream deck. Let's indict the motherfucker. Let's indict him. That's got to go on the stream deck, bro. Come on. Wake up. Z-Man. Thank you, Z-Man. Appreciate you. Let me check and see if there was text associated with that. What'd Z-Man say? Nothing. Real one. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Uh, that's a real Lil Wayne lyric, by the way. I, I wasn't uh, crazy about the new Drake album. Sorry to tell you. But trust me, you're not as sorry as I am. Where are the hits? Where are the hits? Which, which song is the standout hit from that? Is it the one with Lil Yachty? I don't think so. Is it the one with J. Cole? Maybe. It's crazy how, it's crazy how a Drake album can come out. Well, I should talk about this on my stream on the second channel, which on Wednesday I'll be doing a stream on my second channel with my cousin Gabby, a belated birthday stream for him. And I found some, I found a, vintage Yu-Gi-Oh cards and we're going to open them up on stream. It's about to be lit, but we'll talk about the Drake album on then. But I just wanted to say very briefly, how is it possible that one of the greatest Drake songs ever, in my opinion, which is of course, 8 a.m. in Charlotte, the one he dropped the music video for the other night, 8 a.m. in Charlotte is one of the greatest examples of a human being rapping that I have ever seen in my life. No hook. Simple beat, no fancy distractions and smoke and mirrors, just straight fucking bars. One of the greatest performances of a rapper I've ever seen. Just like every line is a bar. And the rest of the album, I was just kind of fucking chilling. The album called For the Dogs. Where's the woof, woof? Where is that? You know? Anyways. Let's get back to Igor. Let me see what y'all said. Let me see what y'all said right quick. This reminds me of MTV Cribs where they just rent out the house for the video. Sure feels like that. It doesn't feel like anyone actually lives here. The house is a money laundering scheme. Yeah, it could be some tax, sneaky tax ting. What up, Laura? Thank you for encouraging everyone to thumbs up the ting. You're a true cult member. Not everyone does. You know, some people... Some people are clearly not actually about this cult, and it hurts. This man is more like my abuela than my actual abuela. I gotta text my abuela back. Uh, my goal is to put myself out of business. That's true. Thank you for reminding me. That's true. My goal is to make it so that I don't have to make these videos anymore, at which point, who knows, maybe I'll make videos about, I don't know. We'll figure it out. What up, Jenny Rose? Um... Drake review. I think Drake is the greatest rapper of all time. Don't get me wrong. But that album, I just... I feel like... I, I said to my friend Philip yesterday, this Drake album... Actually, the past four Drake albums suffer from the Irishman syndrome. You know the movie The Irishman that took like, I don't know, 11 years to produce? The Robert, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Martin Scorsese movie about the mob and whatever. Everyone's so excited for it, including me. Four hour fucking movie. And I'll tell you, there was a really incredible three hour movie in there somewhere. But you easily could have cut an hour of that footage to make a really solid movie. I feel like the I feel like the last four Drake albums. The last four Drake albums could have been two classic albums. But there's just so much to sift through, bro. I feel like this Drake album uh, of the past four is the one that I'm actually going to end up with the least amount still on my liked songs on Spotify. Like I'm going to retain the, the fewest of these, which is crazy, but such is life. We're still grateful. I'm grateful that we even still have Drake. Who knows? He could have, he could have, he could have died suddenly in the past few years. So I'm grateful we have him and I'll never complain about new Drake, but I guess I am kind of I'm not complaining. I'm just, that's just my, maybe I'm getting old. Maybe it's me. Maybe the kids are all over it. I don't know. But 
That's where we sleep. But this is our bed when we sleep sometimes. Homeless. Yeah, something Dutch over here, combination. Yeah, sometimes. This is our bed when we sleep sometimes. Homeless. Yeah, something. Sometimes? What do you mean? You don't sleep all the time? Dutch over here, combination something of Dutch. something Dutch, Spanish figure, in combination with Milfi, called in Dutch Nijntje. Milfi? Interesting. And here you can see some of my pieces of art from those. Thank you, Chloe. You said it. It's all been mid since Scorpion. Scorpion was really where, to me, the red flag started to show because Scorpion was such a big fucking album. It was like a double album. And since then, you know, Chris Brown, what was that Chris Brown album he dropped that had like 800 songs on it? Not actually, but like over 100 songs on it. It's like, bro. You're just trying to beef up your Spotify streaming numbers to make more money, which is crazy. But yeah, with Drake, that Scorpion album was such a... I mean, there's several, several tracks off Scorpion that I, I listened to once and I was like, I know I'm never going to listen to this again, so I just got rid of it. So I sort of made my own version of the Scorpion album on Spotify just with the songs that I liked. But yeah, man, the past four albums, it's like I might pick one or two. Her Loss, I really liked. Uh... You know, we'll talk about it on Wednesday. Dolce & Gabbana. I have more shoes, but this one has, are one of my favorites. I love the little details. So ugly. What were Igor's previous four wives like, you know? He had to get rid of them because they were too plain. They were too plain and simple. They didn't wear the most gaudy. Like, this looks like a medieval knight would wear this. You know? Oh, you know what? No. A medieval drag queen who was doing like a, a bit where they were a knight, but like a sexy knight would wear that. With like a chain link, you know what I mean? Like a chain link a thong or something like that. <laughs> wow, and these are my Dolce Gabbana bags. What I love about these bags is that they're actually hand painted. Oh, this is the masterpiece of bag with the shoes that I showed you before. Thank you, Gervasio. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Bad Dog Sports, money can't buy taste, yep. Yeah. Welcome, names remain anonymous, and welcome, Michael M, and welcome, Lil Beta Fish. The be Lil Beta Fish, you and Alpha Mentality need to link up and exchange ideas, for real. Next is of, of Cinderella, and this is Venice. Cinderella shoes. Make your dreams also to come reality. Come. Make your dreams to also come reality. I'm going to put that on a shirt. Make your dream. If you don't do it big, I will do it. And there, I mean, there's so many quotables in this. We're talking about bars. Drake should watch this video, pick up some bars from this. Make your dreams also to come reality. Wow. Over here, you see at the wall already the shoots that we prepared the shoots prepared for the next trip <laughs> so we fly away tomorrow that is the blue collection oh that God. are shoots here you have the colorful suits more over here and i have some different watches that i can wear over here we have the suits for no not the gym is that jim carrey the mask on one of the ties for the special occasion right look at look at this look at that Looks like an Indian, uh, you know, one of those Indian dress stores where they sell like the sari for the for the Indian weddings. You know when white girls go to an Indian wedding. One of my favorite things on this planet is when white girls go to an Indian wedding, and then they're all on Instagram with their henna tattoo and the sari on, and they're talking about how much they love the culture and they're dancing to that one Jay Z Indian remix. You know the one. <laughs> that is one of my favorite things. And I have, there's a bunch of weird things that I, that I perceive that I love. You know, like I've said some of my, my hot takes before that like, uh, if you see, uh, you know, what's one of them? If you see a girl who has like a gummy smile where like when she smiles, her gums are very prominent, she's probably into horses or her brother or her husband is in the military. This is just a fact. This is just one of the things I pick up on. Okay, um, I'm blanking right now on, on what some of my other hot takes are. But one of them is that few things bring greater joy to white girls than going to an Indian wedding. 
every white girl, I feel like if I was a white girl, I would date a brown guy at some point in my life just to be able to go to an Indian wedding, just to have that on my list of things. Even if I was like, yeah, I'm not going to marry this guy. I know that they love it that much. Promise. Promise. You know what's another thing I really want to do? I want to I wanna, uh, go to a, like a, not like, not like a, like an adult, like an adult one, like, okay, preface, an adult like cheerleading competition or like, you know, where they have the, wherever they train the cheerleaders for like the football teams or whatever, I want to go into one of their big conventions when it's quiet and just go, Sarah, and see how many girls turn their head. Just, Emily. But yeah, that's what this closet looks like. It looks like they're, you know, getting ready for an Indian wedding. And those ties are... My gummy ex had a brother in the military. There, see? I just know things. I just know everything. Useless information, but I just... Street smart. I don't know. Originally painted... All these collectibles, not a single Pokemon card. Silica says, sounds like a poorly translated Chinese proverb in a rom-com. Oh yeah, the, the, whatever she said about success. Make your dreams to come reality. Um, what are y'all saying? Uh, make your dreams also a reality. Colorful shooch, shooch. <laughs> the shooch. Uh, fuck. It's the one time they get the pass, so they got hard. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the white girls. Yes, so true. Um, wedding goes on for three days. Yeah. Oh, a white girl that goes to an Indian wedding, she'd be posting about it for so long. For so long. Oh, my God. Ha Congratulations to Sarita and Daljeet. On their beautiful wedding. So honored to enjoy the culture and blah, blah, blah. And then they'll post like the most basic. They'll be like, oh my God, do you guys know that naan means bread? It's so good. The butter chicken was insane. <laughs> Have you guys heard of roti? Mmm. So good. And then they'd be swearing they're cultured. Then you ask them, you, that same girl that I'm talking about, you ask her, so what are, what are you? Like, what's your background? She's like, oh, my God. Long story. So I'm a quarter of this, and I'm 17% that. Bitch, how many parents you got? Shut up. <laughs> I was just playing. But also, my internal monologue be coming out, too. Just tell You're white. Well, actually, no. No. All right. There's at least 17 Emily's in this cult alone. So true. People with old Bluetooth things in the ear for sure that have that little nipple thing in the middle of their work laptop. Huh. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we knew that. And the phone case that like clips onto the belt. That's crazy. Um, the closet screams Jessica or Bethany for sure. This frame we're looking at right now on the screen is his least favorite suits. Like if he had to choose you know, 10 items of clothing that had to get thrown in a fire, he would choose these ones. He's like, oh, these are too plain for me. He dresses his women like Kanye, LOL. Om Prakash Swain, yes, invite me to your wedding. Food a little too spicy, but I love the robes. Take me back to post-Indian wedding from a few weeks ago. Straight up. Oh, what's the other one? You've never seen a pregnant Chinese woman. That's another one of them. Um, you've never, uh, fuck, what's another one? The gummy smile shit for sure. There was a stream I did a couple months ago where I talked about all of my, I, I mentioned several of my, like, theories. Let's go. One to go. Then, uh, it is Andrea's time. Actually, we start with the one. This is my, uh, Flavio Castellani and Dolce Gabbana collection. And look at here. I had it in my in the convention in Bangkok. We were speaking about matching. Wow. You know the movie Midsummer? That's what this that's what they're dressing for. Blue eyes white dragon cosplay costume. 
literally this this outfit right here looks like a, one of those soy sauce containers at a at a chinese restaurant blue soy sauce i don't even know what to say i'm gonna google blue soy sauce can bowl look at this i'm so i've seen everything i've literally seen the world look at this she dressed like this right now it looks like this shit so specific too Literally, like, look, look at this. Look at this. What the hell? Oh, wow. I'm surprised they didn't have one of those lucky cats that goes like this. You know how that Chinese restaurant they have a lucky cat? Some people, they just pull on some clothes, but we really take our business serious. Oh yeah, that's, that is how you indicate that you take your business serious? By wearing insane tablecloths? These people have no sense of contrast. No sense of contrast. They think every item has to match every other item. In his mind, in Igor's mind, he's like, well, if the pants are black, the shirt should be black. If the pants are white, the shirt should be white. No, mitch, no matching. God forbid they actually have to put their own outfit together. Oh, perfect. It all comes pre... It already matches? Great. We have something else that Andrea and I share. The love for the shoes. You see here 25% of my shoes. He has and, more um, shoes than me. And honestly, it's a big love. It's not a little love, it's a big it's love. A big you, love. You have more shoes than me. This is just a part. All handmade. They made this shoe specially for me. Here. What do you think about this? Oh, the chocolate ones. Many colors. The chocolate so. ones. Sometimes I even let them make the belt with it. That there's a matching belt. That's what you see. <laughs> You see over here as well, some belts. Dude. I would not wear one of the things that he's shown so far. Look the details. Coco Chanel. Barely, that's barely a fit, shouty. That ain't it, that's not it. That's not a fit. The bright hot pink with the leopard? You're crazy. That's not it. That's not it. What the fuck? Let's go to our private bathroom. LOL, some people just pull on pull on clothes. We go into our tickle trunk and put on the fake nose with glasses and some stage clothes because we take our business serious. Na, 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 na. Actually, our sleeping room in the bathroom is big as the living room. Can yeah, you imagine? Exactly the same size as the living room is our uh, yeah sleeping room, including bathroom. In the windows, you see all those beautiful Disney figures. That tub is not even big enough for him alone. That uh, I person. <laughs> These shoes, yes. I don't even know if I can read this comment. They are made from baby foreskin that was supposed to be used for severe burn victims' skin grafts. I <laughs> like very much. I collect them. Sitting in this bath tube, you have a beautiful view as well over our garden. Is that the flower when you gave me when Adam's is born? How much to smell? How much to put your nose in and smell one of his uh, leather shoes that does not breathe at all? Imagine his feet after a day running around on stage with his scepter promoting one coin. Imagine the smell of one of those alligator skin shoes after the fact. And I will keep them forever. Perfume collection. Oh, a few. So you just saw. Let me spot some of these colognes. For sure, we're going to see one million. We're going to see Versace Eros. Oh my God. Just every Tom Ford. Yeah, we'll take one of everything, I guess. Why not? Fume collection. So whack. He, he, <laughs> his morning routine, his like skincare routine, is he just takes one of every bottle and sprays one spray of every bottle. 
So you just saw our sleeping room and Andrea told me, Igor, you're not going to show your favorite room of the house. But the sex dungeon. Hey guys, shh, I give you a little sneak preview. This is the room that I like. The most. I do the laundry in this house. So I take care about that. I'm not supposed to show you this because Andrea said, whoa, it's my mother who pointed me on that. She said, when you want to keep your beautiful clothes good, take care that you do it yourself. So let's go up. Jesus Christ. He, he doesn't wash, he doesn't, they don't wash clothes. They just buy new ones. Let's go up to level number six. Six. Hermes and guest room. Welcome at level number six. Over here we are on level number six. We have actually, we have four rooms. The first room is the room of Hermes. Look at it, this is where he normally sleeps. This is his room. We have so many guests today in the house that even this room is used. Over here we have the, the Verona Romeo and Juliet room. This is pure a guest room. This room is pure for the guests. And now I show you the emoji pillows. <laughs> that imagining the Lebanese guy and the Asian guy that they had downstairs in the in the boardroom being shown to their guest room and the, just seeing the emoji pillows. The other guest room that we have, and that is uh, our uh, New York Manhattan room. This is a room specially for guests. Last room. How is that a New York Manhattan room? What about that room was New York Manhattan? The hell? It wasn't he on the third. Wasn't him and his wife on like the fourth floor? So you keep your kid two floors away from you? That's crazy, bro. Yes. Last room, the fourth room on this floor, floor number six. You have your own uh, bathroom over here. We uh, we are making towels for them. Look, once we had Per Carlson as a guest in the house, and we made for him specially this towel. Let's go to floor number seven. And level number seven is actually the level of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And over here, this is we have a room with seven beds. That's creepy. Heaven's Gate type shit right there. And when we do super, super duper big masterclass trainings in the house, wow. we can have up to 23 guests. And every guest has his own bed. What? Fuck. All the space in his room, and they got seven people crammed in one room. See, I knew it was going to get creepier as we went. Seven beds. Dude. So. And you know his, his downline recruits that get invited to his house. They're the ones paying, like, thousands of dollars. Like, oh, Igor's like going to let us stay in his house for this master class. And, like, this is their accommodation. Absolutely crazy. We can have up... To 23 guests and every guest has his own bed one of my favorite levels because it's the top it's level number eight so this is the crown diamond level we have here four beds that are there and we can convert them Dude. into two we can even make six beds in here the tiniest little attic bro that's so haram four more beds crammed in there yeah, I like you to see how beautiful is this because when you look outside over here, then you have a beautiful view over the garden. And of a beautiful view of the highway. You see highway A1. This is the top of our house, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to go down because I want to show you on level number three what was in the past the garage. We made an extra room for guests so that we can accommodate the 23 guests. God for, yeah, you didn't have enough beds crammed into this fucking house. Yes, and after that, we are going back down, 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 down to level number two, where we have the pool area, and number one, where we have the beautiful uh, uh, billiard and uh, the pool table. Like I said, on the ceiling, when we are on floor number eight, we go back to <laughs> floor number three. And I will Eight to floor Goldilocks and the three bears, hilarious.
show you. I left it upstairs. What did you just fucking say? I'm sorry, I meant the crown diamond level. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what we made out of the garage. It was originally a garage for little cars. It's not finished, but it's already in use. We have some paintings over here. Over here is a beautiful painting. Another part of my shoes. Yeah. Alzheimer's going to hit hard in this house. Hilarious. Yes. It's the second floor. And the second floor is the pool area. And I think that Andrea and her best friend Madeline is somewhere here. Whoa, I think they are in the sauna. Yes, look there. Whoa, I find them. God. Life you have also to enjoy. We are trying to combine everything. The business oh, and the... Oh, hold on a second, y'all. I gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta see something. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are fucking... Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. Nah. Okay, hold up. This is crazy. This is... This is giving me the vibes of, uh, what's the man named from Tiger King with all the wives and shit? This is very eerie how he just got them here, his wife and her friend. I find them. Both half his age and like, is just filming them like, look, let's get a shot of her showering. This girl is actually stupid fucking sexy, by the way. <laughs> but yeah. Life you have also to enjoy, we are trying to combine everything. The business and the the family and the friends. Look here, the God damn, bro. I'm a I'm a message the friend. Sorry to hear about one coin. <laughs> Sorry to hear about one coin. So funny. I'm do. I got some research to do. This is crazy. View. Look the view outside with the door open. Like Igor, can I have my friend over? He's like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, bring her over. What are you guys gonna do? She's like, swim. He just sits there in his little egg chair watching them. <laughs> uh... Pants to sauna, sweaty old guy with the biggest heart. <laughs> so funny. So giving Ghislaine vibes, mixing business and pleasure. So fucking creepy, right? He's telling his wife, your friend hasn't been over in a while. Wow, beautiful pool area. And now we go to another pool billiard. <laughs> He's so gassed. finished the, the, the board meeting yeah. so the work is done it's time for some pleasure what a terrible room it's just a nondescript room with just the pool table inside it. it's so creepy we finished it up this is whatever has to do with the pool oh my the dungeon this was it this was the house you have now seen all the eight levels of our house so our multi-level house I love how every time we go to a new scene, it says Igor E. Alberts and Andrea. Like, we know, bro. It's, it's in the title. <laughs> what up, El Musima? He watches them like a creep, right? <laughs> no windows. Time for pleasure. Meet my wife and her friend. <laughs> now you have seen a house, but I'm very proud of our garden. We are looking every morning on that field of grass. We made a, a mysterious trail into the woods. So we have actually our, our secret garden. Oh wow, check this out. A secret garden. Hold on, we gotta see the secret garden. That when my children in the future walk this path, they find the secret of this garden because it has a lot of history from Greek and from the Roman Empire. So let's do a walk and let's see what dreams may come. We 
have a couple of beautiful statues that are hidden on this trail. That you have in the woods, you find a place where you can drink some tea or sit and talk in quietness. My house is partly a reflection of the life that we are living. And we went out to see the world, but we brought the world back to our house. A reflection of the life we're living, full of tacky crap, but lacking any real meaning. I'm walking here, and I think when, when you have walked with me this beautiful secret path, then you will feel that sitting here looking up to the trees, it's magic, it's magic. It's my house of dreams. We love the animals, so we have our own zebra over here that is always looking from one of the most beautiful spots of, of the garden. When you want to see the house in its full glory, look at this. There you see that you can have an imaginary idea, but when you can think it, you can create it. When you can dream it, you can do it. And because of those thoughts, because of putting those thoughts into reality, into action, I'm living in the house of dreams. I want to watch this again with the with the music from the movie Hereditary over it. You know at the end of Hereditary there's like that that you'll know the music if you heard it. I don't want to play it because it'll get me taken down, but crazy. So let's check this out. On I just found Andrea's Instagram. And if you go to Andrea's Instagram, you'll see that one of her most recent posts is a tribute to Jesse Lee Ward. And the rest of it is like exactly what you would expect. Like just luxury flexing. I'm wondering what company she's in now. Okay, here, let's check this out. Uh Andrea Simbala, 233K followers, I bet. We're not gonna, I don't need to watch this story. Uh, let's see. Here's her Jesse Lee Ward post. RIP on Boston, no words, lots of tears, and a lot of anger. The industry lost a legend. Crazy. We, we are a legend. We all are. Books will talk about us. <laughs> Books will talk about you, I'm, I'm sure, but not in the way you think. Ready for the next 90 days run? Think bigger, believe more, move faster. Vietnam, I'm almost there. And then posting. Like, this has to be against her company's compliance rules, right? Her posting, I'm th pretty sure this is Emirates first class. It looks like Emirates first class. Not that I would fucking know. But uh, what company is she with? Oh, Mavi, Mavi. Insane. Literally can't make this shit up. Crazy. Absolutely can't believe this. Let me see Igor's. Igor Alberts. Of course, can't be his real name. How does he have way less followers than her? She has like 233K. He has 78K. Oh, no. Leonidas, Rocky. Why does he look so old here? I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. What? Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember it. What is this audio? What? <laughs> what? The world is That was actually the audio he used for it. Wow. That is so funny. Life is about stepping into things we don't feel ready for. And then learning repeatedly 
that we can piece together the knowledge along the way. 78 likes, you know? <laughs> that day on the subway, what did I say to you? What were my words to you? Maybe it was your time to lose. Jesus Christ. I just read that the French are demonstrating because, you know, they work 37 hours a week. Him holding his titty. It's a little bit too much. And they want to rise the pension from 62 to 64. Man, oh man. Cannot be done. The French are protesting, they go on the street, and what they say to everybody that they have the right of laziness. And the, <laughs> the right of laziness. How beautiful is it? LOL, so like I said, tro troops before going to Vietnam, uh, Andrea's caption. A24 presents House of Dreams, right? McMansion. <laughs> Fucking insane. Surcharge with a controversial opinion about Drake uh, not writing his bars. First of all, I think Drake does write his bars, but guess what? I actually wouldn't care if Drake or any rapper didn't write their bars. I care about bars and hits. I don't care how many people had to come together to do it because, you know, it's like saying, oh, well, uh, you know, you don't like a movie because the actor that's playing the character you like didn't write the script. I don't give a fuck. It's entertainment, bro. Who cares? I know with rap, it's more like, oh, well, they're saying that this is their real experience and they really lived it. But rarely is that ever true. And with Drake, there's a lot of things like his name drops and experiences he talks about where it's like only he could have written it. So, you know, if you found out that your favorite musician wasn't writing their shit, you, you know, I'm sure you would sway a little bit on that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't care. I truly don't care. You know, what up, carnivorous cows? Let me find out he has a statue of himself. Um, Lil Beta Fish, how do you become a member? You click the icon at the bottom of the chat there, and you can choose super sticker, super chat, membership, membership gifting. He's a villain from the movie Master of Disguise. Uh, this guy lives my GTA character lifestyle. So funny. Crime and then spend money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that does, it does look like a half ass Airbnb, Jimmy Moon. Dominic Izzo was talking about her for sure, yeah. This guy is like European Dominic Izzo. <laughs> Two pairs of glasses on, I didn't even notice that. Uh, he almost looks like high pitch Eric, I haven't seen that. Now I'm bitter, the house of dementia. Imagine Izzo if he actually had this type of money, right? Crazy. Drake haters do need to stop. Ooh, this one looks good. The stay happy, the don't waste Tim, the have an entrepreneurial mind and are willing to take calculate risks, the love creating success for all, paying it forwards, always helping others achieving what the dream wish or want, the love celebrating other people's success. I mean, such good advice here. This is crazy. We don't grow when things are easy. We grow when we face difficulties. You know what happened? I'm on a dollar to 
Israel man didn't come, but I find out that he must be here somewhere. I think the guy is sick, or so maybe Corona. I'm going to look. The Christmas man is sleeping. What do we have to do? All the presents for all the children are here. Oh, I, you know what I will do? I am here now anyhow, so I will bring it to you. I'm going to bring you the Christmas present because it must be a happy Christmas. Stay sleeping. I'm going to come. I'm going to pack the packages and... Literally robbing Santa. And I will come see you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I can't even look at it. <laughs> Look at the comments too. <laughs> Vomit. So fucking funny. What's this? Tra let's translate it. I met you once at the Apple Appy in Narden. I thought what you kind of campers these were. Don't embarrass yourself like this one and all fraud. Wow. Cool video. Gets you in the mood. <laughs> I will send you in Abu Dhabi. It's insane, but fun. Literally just bought. Contagious joy. <laughs> no fucking way. Let's translate this. Proud. Oh, dear, dear. The energy. Fucking insane. That's like worse than the DJ Khaled dancing. I want somebody, somebody who has a, a rotoscoping experience rotoscope him out so i can use that as like a green screen gif i'll put him in my office background here where is it i'll put him in the office background so that we can uh you know have him dancing in the office that's crazy that's actually crazy I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling okay do you want to huh do i want to what Cool, man. Time you buy an airplane ticket. This is literally like, uh, you know, when Instagram pops up those things, it's like, do you want to convert your stories into a reel? He just says yes every time. Yeah. Do you want to live? What the fuck? You came here to be happy. Don't get distracted. A person, I'm coming for everything that, like kings, always have. Huh? What the fuck? I'm having too much fun. La Dolce Vita is a choice. Living level Dolce Vita. When others were partying, going out and playing, we decided to work on our future. Jesus Christ. Now look at me. I'm 70. I'm 70, dressing like... Literally, Chris Terry uh, outfit right here. <laughs> Jesus. He's wearing Andrea's uh, soy sauce container shirt. swimming in the water and I turn around <laughs> who I have there wow <laughs> look at him camouflaged into the wall fucking insane there's a picture on Andrea's Instagram of her with Vin Diesel I'm jealous this is crazy look at this guy 
how do you feel, you at home, how do you feel knowing that this guy is out here traveling and living his best life? It almost makes me want to, it almost makes me want to give in to the scam and just start scamming. It almost makes me want to give in because look, look at all the fucking places this guy is going. Sure, he probably has legal issues and baby mama drama out the wazoo and, you know, people chasing after him for child support or whatever, I'm guessing. But look, bro, he's, tr he's doing it. He's traveling. He's skiing. He's in the ocean. He's in Dubai. He's doing his thing. I'm not doing that. Maybe I am just a jealous hater after all. Look at it. You know, it almost, it almost makes you want to go, you know what? In a hundred years, all of us are going to be dead. Igor, me, you, we're all going to be dead. And in 200 years, maybe no one will even know who we are. Maybe our great, 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 great grandchildren probably won't even have any fucking clue about who we were or what our names were. It almost makes you want to go, you know what? We're only here for a limited time anyways. Fuck it. I might as well just get my coins while I'm here. You know? Even if I end up going to jail or getting killed, at least I at least I had all these experiences that most people didn't have, right? At least I had all these experiences most people didn't have, and maybe my, you know, 50 or 60 years of life, I packed in more stuff. Here is with Jon Snow. I packed in those 50 or 60 years with more life than most people get out of their 70 or 80 years. Maybe that's maybe that's Hello, hello. Maybe that's the the key. You know? The most amazing woman on this planet. Who is now a fugitive. Do you agree to that? In terms of business, the most amazing woman. Literally, Ruja Ignatova, the. No way they had Pitbull performing at one coin. Oh, this is at Eric Worre's GoPro event. How, I should have known. It's time to suck in excess. Remember he said that? They're crazy, man. Crazy. Meanwhile, I've got legal issues out the wazoo. I'm not making millions, though. I'm trying to fight the good fight. Where has it got me? I, I'm not on the jet. I'm not on the, you know what I mean? I'm not, in the, I'm not in Dubai. I've never been to Europe. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Crazy. Crazy. I execute pyramid scheme and swim in money pool. Izzo will never have a secret garden. Izzo has failed. He's bitter. Yeah. If Izzo had this kind of money, he would flex like this for sure. This is crazy, man. Can't believe it. Truly. Truly can't believe this. Did I miss a donation from somebody in the, in the stream labs? I think I might have. Tretino. How did I miss that? Tretino. You're Yes, Tretino donated five and said, I'm broke, I'm fucking poor. Yes, Tretino, thank you so much, King. Uh, wow. Sorry I missed that, Tretino. Thank you guys for the support, too. If you want to... Look, 88,000.88.3K subscribers. Imagine... Let me do some quick math. Let me do some quick math. If Tretino dropped $5. If 88,300 people... All donated five dollars. That's four hundred and forty-one thousand five hundred dollars. Now, I would guess that all of those eighty-eight thousand people probably spend five dollars on something in a day, right? Today, probably eighty-eight thousand of the eighty-eight thousand subscribers I have spent five dollars on something, right? And my theory is this. This is a crazy one. My theory is that $5 for any one of those 88,000 people wouldn't be enough to change their life for better or for worse. If they all received $5, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the difference between them sleeping on the street or not. And if they lost $5, if they had a $5 bill and it went missing, you know, they had it in their pocket or it flew away or something, that also wouldn't be enough to displace them in any serious way. So it begs the question, why 
do 88,300 people not just come together to hit the Streamlabs link in the chat and give me 400 and however many thousand dollars that that was in $5 intervals. And that way, we actually now stand a fighting chance against the industry. There are so many people who comment, you're doing God's work. Wish I could do more to help. Money! <laughs> Money will help. You know, we just got to keep, you know, you got to get five people to give me five dollars. Five dollars. You know, the MLM say, oh, it's only ninety nine dollars to sign up. It's only two hundred dollars to sign up. You can do that, bro. Five. I'm, I'm saying five. I'm saying five. And that's only if you want it to. You could do ten. That's a bare minimum. We talk five is the bare minimum. You know what I mean? Even every even one dollar from every person would be eighty eight K. I've never had 88K before. That'd be, that'd be crazy. But $400,000, boom, we're beating the lawsuit. Boom, we're beating the lawsuit. Boom, we're beating the lawsuit. Boom, maybe I take a little mini vacation because I've never been to Europe or Asia. Think about it. Think about it. This is my offer to you. You think about it. Who wants to be a 400,000 heir? Me. You know? <laughs> you know? Uh. So funny. It literally has me uh the the seeing Igor's uh Igor's lifestyle has me has me scheming now. Uh <laughs> there you go. There you go, suck beer zing. Come on, that was a super chat too. Six ninety nine. See, he went above and beyond. Actually, YouTube takes thirty percent. So we're, we're all basically basically that's basically five. So suck beer's done his part. Let me write, let me make a list right now of all 88,300 people, their first and last name that subscribed to me. You just got crossed off. And if we imagine we did this every month. Hello. You know, there's no reason I shouldn't be a deca millionaire by now. At least one million. Come on. <sighs> Never been more in the mood. Silicon Valley, hilarious. Crypto Fugazi, $5 for global peace and for Marco's Eurasian vacation. Hello. You guys are getting it. Streamlabs link is the is the pinned comment in the chat. That's the best way because the YouTube the YouTube the memberships and super chats they take thirty percent. But if you buy a membership, actually the best thing you can do is gift memberships because it's actually a tangible thing that people get. You know, they get access to videos early. They get access to their name being green in the chat. They get access to the special emojis in the chat. If you donate, it's a one and done, which we greatly appreciate. And you know it goes towards keeping the lights on and fighting the forces of evil. But if you wanted something to be like, oh, I gave the money, I spent $5, and I got blank back, that's the way. Silica says, you know, do you want? Exactly. What if I told you Drake one time promoted an MLM? Jasmine, I'm actually very curious to know, are you talking about the thing he did with, uh, fuck, what's that guy's name? Before, the day before her loss came out? I forget the guy's name. Are you, t are you talking about that? But I've also wondered about this because there's old videos of Drake where he's driving around in a rented, like, Rolls Royce. And he posted this once. Drake rented Rolls Royce. Here we go, look. And he was talking about like fake flexing it. Here, look. Drake gifted Rolls Royce Phantom he used to rent for 5K a month. Look, look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, I'm not sharing the screen, am I? Because I'm an idiot. Here we go. No. This is Ovio, Ovio Nico. Is that Chris Brown's track? Did it just stop? Show the Phantom. So, there's definitely something about this. There, Drake also, on one of his songs, I think it's Deep Pockets, he has a line where he says, pyramid schemes like the Egyptians. And he's talking about the past. So he's alluded to being part of a pyramid scheme before on a song, saying him and his boys were in a pyramid scheme. And then him renting the old Rolls Royce. I sure hope it isn't fucking true, but I want to know what company it was with. So it, it reaches everybody. It's crazy. Here I am sinking like rock. Yeah, crazy fit. <laughs> Alex, Alex FPV, you could rock a crazy fit like Igor for sure. All those places, but one day will come to an end. I'd rather live life simple than end up with all that drama. Fair. TBH, same. I want to buy designer and travel all the time. 
There's no amount of money you could give me to wear those clothes. Hilarious, Natasha. I can't imagine being like the eighth wife and having a child. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, what up, Tretino? It's not the destination that matters. It's the people you exploited to get there along the way, for real. I'm telling you right now, y'all's contributions to the Streamlabs is the only thing, the only thing that you could hope to keep me from going to the dark side because trust me, I could be crazy at this, you know? So keep me on the, there you go, Marco is my dad. Thank you, Marco is my dad. So keep me on the light side. Keep me on the light side and hit that, you know, bribe me to stay good. <laughs> bribe me into, bribe me into goodness. Thank you, Marco is my dad, for the donation. Who is that? Oh, TK Subi, thank you. Uh, okay, let's see. $5 on something is nothing compared to someone. Me. So wake up, people. <laughs> yep. I've been stockpiling $5 bills in the garage so I can maintain diamond platinum level each month this year. As you should. Marco, I've done my part. My downline abandoned me. So funny. I put my money where my thumb is. <laughs> Just got in the live. What's the money for? I wish I could say, let's just say legalities. Let's just say legalities. What up, Danny? Uh, Marco. I get the bag, Marco. Your video about the truth about pyramid schemes was outstanding. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate you. Shout out to Beyond for the animations. Uh, Drake was in Avon. <laughs> Hilarious. What is it, um, Jasmine? She was saying that Drake was in an MLM. Or are you just making, are you just saying hypothetically, what if I told you Drake was an MLM? Has anyone seen the deep dive into Drake's gambling addiction slash money-making scheme? I actually support Drake being a gambling addict because he has the money. Which is, I mean, he has infinite money. Do you know about the MLM Thrive and Chris Watts, Shanann Watts homicide? Yes. Yes, I do. I do know about that. And I think it needs to be talked about more. Eighth wife gets the eighth floor. What up, David? Um, I'm in if you want to hit up the dark side. For real, Alex, you're going to join my downline? What up, Julie? Marco, when you go dark, we all go dark. Downline forever. Thank you. Peace out, Laura. Have a good sleep on the eighth floor of Igor's house in one of the four beds. Beyond, what up? Welcome, welcome. Everyone thumbs up the ting. There's 105 watching, but only 126 likes. It does not make any sense. That was crazy. Seriously insane. Okay, well, what else? This is, I mean, this is sort of, I'm sort of in a weird posi position right now because the stream I did on Wednesday was meant to encapsulate th all the videos I watched about Igor last stream as well as the house tour we watched today that was all supposed to be one stream and that one got cut short which means i didn't have as much content to talk about on this stream so maybe this stream will have you know it'll be two short streams i don't know but i will definitely be streaming wednesday on uh on my second channel with my cousin gabby so marco eyeing the dark side for real uh beyond i can't i can't talk about it i didn't do it though i didn't pull the fire alarm Yes. You just don't know who Igor is? You're going to have to rewind. You got to go watch the stream, the short stream from, uh, from Wednesday and the new stream to Igor's Mansion today. Yeah. Did Jasmine say what MLM Drake was in? No? Okay. Go watch. Oh, also, aside from thumbs upping this, this is really inconvenient. If, I, if the stream hadn't been cut short on Wednesday and whatever happened there didn't happen, I would have dropped what is uh, the truth about pyramid schemes yesterday and then stream today. I hate dropping two videos in the same day, even if it's just a stream and whatever. I like spreading it out, you know, but alas, it is what it is. So go thumbs up and watch the truth about pyramid schemes. Really beautiful video uh, thanks to the graphics and background work of Beyond. Let me share the screen just in case you haven't seen it. 
I mean, look how beautiful this is. No product. I filmed this. I filmed this in front of a green screen like over a month ago, and then the past since then has just been like editing and then legit. Uh, have a product. Editing Beyond's animations, etc. Sound effects. Shout out to look at look at these amazing animations by Beyond. So next level. So profesh. So professional. All explained. Less than ten minutes long. So beautiful, frankly, we call it concise. We call it we call it well researched. We call it so concise. Mythic. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. My parents are now fully out of MLM. No more fucking Marco. Marco. Come on, Marco. Fuck him. Love that. Thank you. The honest truth. What up? What's up? What's popping? One of your best. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful video. The best video, frankly. Uh, thank you, Giselle. The only person who won't love it will be Scott Johnson. By the way, clearly the message, the big disclaimer that I said at the beginning of my last stream, which I told you has been weighing on my mind very heavy, apparently y'all didn't get the fucking message. Ladies, apparently y'all didn't get the message because I said, if you're in my DM and you live abroad... Thank you, Mythic. If you're in my DM and you live abroad, leave me alone. <laughs> if you're in my DM and you live abroad, you are a paid assassin matrix agent hired by the DeVos family. Okay? Because y'all be in my DM living on the other side of the world. What do you want? What do you want from me? Hey, how's it going? What are you up to? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Come to me with an offer. Hey, Marco, I'm going to be in your ends. Do, do, do. Hey, Marco, come pull up. Hey, Marco. Marco, I, I got a plane ticket. Marco, my brother works for JetBlue. I'm going to get I'm gonna get the plane ticket to fly out or to fly you out or pay for the hotel. My brother works at the Ramada Inn. I'm going to get you to hook up whatever. What, something. Something. But some of y'all, even after the last stream, still DMing me. Hey, I'm not a paid assassin, but I live in London. What the fuck am I doing? You know where I am? Do you know where I am? I'm on the west side of Canada. Okay? Insane. The honest truth. Thank you, the honest truth. That's the honest truth, what I just said. Execution, we call it. Perfect execution, frankly. You look at what's going on under Biden, and frankly, there's no more execution. Hired them because they're cheaper. Yep. Yeah. It's a promo for Marco Tomb Raider. Yeah, my video game will be crazy. Igor Training. Ooh, we should watch that. Get one person to give $5 and that one person gets five. That's what I'm saying. A friend of mine who was speaking out against MLMs decided to join Beniv. What the fuck is Beniv? He's doing this with his wise eye open. It's devastating. What a... That's a mistake. Foster a relationship with someone... You already lost me. You already lost me. Okay, hear me out. Foster a relationship with someone you like abroad. Then move there when you're steady so you get the benefit of better lawsuit protection. Boring. <laughs> I'm just playing. What, what if I like the excitement of being sued? You know, I don't, but... I fought, watched his 40-minute press conference again today where he's talking about... Abu Dhabi dying like a dog. So funny. He died like a dog. We went in there with big guns, frankly, the biggest guns, and nobody knows military tactics like me, and we did it so big and so strongly, and we went there, and you look at what's going on with ISIS. Bad guys, frankly, the baddest of the bad, and we, we went in there, and we took them out. Bing, bing. You look at what crooked Joe Biden's doing. He's not getting the terrorists. That's okay, right? If we're going to get Marco his 10 wife quota, some of them are going to be abroad, right? Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The ball's on this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing the, it's like it blends into the New York accent too, too often, too easily. I need to do a, I used to, when I was younger, man, when I was like a kid, I did a pretty good Obama. But I'm so out of practice with Obama, and I, I don't know why. I just had it better. 
oh shit, I didn't put the coffee creamer back in the fridge. My grandma got me drinking International Delight French Vanilla Coffee Creamer, y'all. Ah, he's crazy. I'm legitimately the world's best grandson, bro. I don't even know what to tell you. Before my grandma died, I got her flowers on uh, Valentine's Day because my grandpa died when I was like a little kid and just nobody ever buy her flowers. Anyway, she died last year. Now my other grandma, bro, she'd be sending me voice messages on WhatsApp talking about, do you want to come over for dinner tomorrow? Y yeah, of course. Are you crazy? Of course I'm going to be over there. So crazy. Alberta is consistently ranked lowest for states, provinces, and North America with slap protection. Is that actually true? It's rated the lowest? You're just saying that. Lowest rated province for slap in Canada? Oh, no. For anti-slap, I should say. Anti-slap. Let me search the word Alberta. Control, control F saved my life. I didn't know about Control F till like two years ago. Take that in. I went my entire school and education career without knowing about Control F. Think about that. Supreme Court of Canada, blah, blah, blah. Latest decision in Canada. Um, I'm not reading this. You could be making it up. I don't know. BC and some other apparently have robust laws. But BC is also the most like weird, like free speech, uh, not friendly provinces, right? Where they have like all, anyways, it's too much. It's too much. We need to find the hot friend from Igor's house tour. That's your goon homework today. Goon homework for today. Go watch The Truth About Pyramid Schemes. Thumbs up the ting. Like, comment on it. And uh, the other piece of homework is find Igor's wife's friend. International delight. See? See? So funny. Um, even Scott Johnson liking that buff body. Hilarious. Aunties and grandmas be on WhatsApp heavy for real. It's actually North America... North America is the only people that don't rely primarily on an app like WhatsApp or WeChat. Um, like iMessage is more common in North America only. Uh, Cubone fan. Marco, why did you ban me from chat? Do I have to pay you to have my comments seen in the chat? I don't know who you are, Cubone. Cubone fan. I like Cubone though. What is control F? where you can like search for a word on a web page. So if like, if you're reading an article and you want to find the word danger, you can control F and type danger and it'll pop you to every uh, example of that word being used in it. It's crazy. Do we like slap or not to slap? We like, slap means strategic lawsuit against public participation. It's when, it's when a person or entity sues like a journalist, for example, for revealing the truth about them, it's a slap suit. So I, we don't like slap. We want anti-slap. Just like we're anti-MLM, we're anti-slap. So, you know, things that are in the public interest or public uh, discussions, uh, those are being limited. Like, I mean, look, look at what's happening to some creators on YouTube who have uh, very big videos about certain things and then all of a sudden they have to be quiet about them for a long time and they can't talk directly about it and their work disappears not saying any names but think about how that be happening that's slap cubone fan appreciate you um to have a chilling effect or free speech yeah yeah you just learned about Control F. Amazing. Just found my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's over for you, bitches. Bro, Yu-Gi-Oh. My childhood was actually kind of blessed. Yu-Gi-Oh, Bionicle, Beyblade, Mighty Beans. 
Y'all was not fucking with me. I'm telling you. Ba- you Bionicle was my shit. Tony Galvin got slapped. Sorry to hear. Well, yeah, I think I fucked up by doing this in the afternoon, but I had to for uh, Thanksgiving reasons, so. You know. Digimon, yeah, Digimon went crazy. Bakugan. Bakugan, I was already sort of out of it, bro. The Star Wars prequels, that was crazy. Lightsaber fights, that was crazy. Yeah, Bakugan, y'all lost me with Bakugan, to be honest with you, bro. I'm not with it. Too much, too much, uh, that was a game I could never get into because my parents, my parents wouldn't have been buying all of that shit, all the different little balls and cards and launchers, like, nah, bro, different. Yu-Gi-Oh, just reshuffle the cards, boom, it's a new game, easy. So, Yu-Gi-Oh, we was, we were definitely going to be talking Yu-Gi-Oh on Wednesday on my second channel, Always Marco Extras. Go subscribe to that if you want to meet my cousin Gabby. I bought uh, I bought him for his birthday. He turned like 34. But I bought him, uh, they reprinted like this old Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack, Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Hello. And uh, I bought one of the reprints. It was like n- more expensive than it should have been. So Streamlabs link in the chat. But I bought it because I thought it would be such a fun thing for like us to open them on stream and whatever. Have you seen Bionicle Masks of Power game? I've seen it, never played it. My friend gave me Sailor Moon cards because I had no idea where to buy them. That's crazy. Dude, If e- when I'm actually rich and famous, it's going to be me and Igor's wife's friend chilling in our house, and I'm just going to have all the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, all the Beyblades, all the Bionicles. You watch. You watch. We're going to find her right now. Nah, I should do this off stream. How about? <laughs> so stupid. Anywho, love y'all. Appreciate you. Uh, nah, I'm not going to end it. I'm not fucking leaving. Let's see if I can find uh, Let's see if I can find an Igor Alberts training. Igor Alberts training. Igor Alberts Masterclass Business for Home 2021. Oh, and it's green screen? Leadership training at the house of Igor and Andrea. Ooh, that could be good. Success Factory Prime Team. Ooh. Igor Alberts, unleash your unlimited potential. Step six on your journey to success. Step one. Ooh. Let's create momentum. Ooh, this is, come on now, look at this. Dreams from Igor Albert, echt super vet. And uh, see you volgende week. Woo! What do you think, Paul? Yeah, fantastic. I'm really fired up. And, uh... Success Factory, what a name. Oh, this is an actual training. Okay, let's go here. An industry legend. Wow, a samurai. Over 30 years of experience, a dancer, generating over $150 million in revenue, a king, a unique mentor. Dream as if you will live forever, live as if you will die today. Original quote, BFH, Igor E. Albert. Tonight's the night we're gonna make it happen. Tonight we we'll put all other things aside. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. I'm so excited. Wow, 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 let me stop here. Let me stop. Wow, wow, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately for you, singing and rapping is only my hobby and I made from network marketing my profession. And that is the thing that gives me the great passion and it gives me the inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say welcome to you all. This was an excellent, great weekend. I enjoyed every speaker. The information that came to you is mesmerizing. It will change your life when you are able to adapt it, to get it into your veins and, 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 and let it flow. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> Welcome to our world, the business for home, rising star, live your life. So, (laughs) 
My advice to you. The border light or lightsaber is amazing. Oh, I didn't even notice the borders were lightsabers. This is crazy. Jasmine, what MLM was Drake in? My most important advice of this evening is to always live in the future of your dreams, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, yeah, why? Because living in the future of your dreams create an extreme freedom. And uh, I saw many times how to how to define our industry. And I want to compare our industry and network marketing with getting a driver's license, ladies and gentlemen. And this weekend, it's all about getting a driver's license. Now, why do I compare it with dr a driver's license? Why well, it's too quiet. do people want to have a driver's license? It's very simple. It's very simple because every young child. Why do I want to compare it to a driver's license? Because it's the one false equivalency that hasn't been beat to death like all the others. So I found a new I angle. Take responsibility. Thank you, Benjamin. Appreciate you supporting this cult. Jasmine re retracting her message before I could see what she said. All good. The moment he becomes a teenager, he starts to dream about having a driver's license. Why? Because when he has a driver's license, he doesn't have to walk anymore. He this is not, you know, he doesn't have to to be depending on other people. People sitting there in the audience with their notepads, like, mm-hmm, driver's license, mm-hmm. Write this down. He doesn't depend anymore. Why does he have a pen in his hand? He's not going to be writing anything. He's in front of a green screen. It's not like there's a board for him to write on. On certain locations. Oh, is it a pen? Oh, it's a clicker? I don't know. Limited locations where you can go. Because when you have your driver's license, you can simply go where you want. When you have your driver's license, you can go with who you want. Because you can take other people in your car. And you know what is the most important thing? You can go whenever you want. You can step out of the door, step in your car, and drive to the destinations you dream of. And that is directly my bridge to network marketing, ladies and gentlemen. Because when you do network marketing, and you must understand that why do you do network marketing and why should other people why should somebody that you approach do network marketing Ex <laughs> they shouldn't exactly for the same reason freedom ladies and gentlemen because network marketing gives you the ultimate freedom you can work where you it was wake up now back in 2013 Okay, but Drake was already a famous rapper by 2013. So are you saying he performed at a Wake Up Now, like, event? D Wake Up Now, MLM, Drake. I have to know this. Okay, Wake Up Now, members have circulated doctored photograph that suggest endorsements of the company from Drake, Bill Gates, and others. Uh-huh. I think Drake wasn't actually part of it. Drake. Yeah, so Drake shouted us out. Yeah, we're a scam. Join the movement. Uh-uh. Watch, I already found it. Oh, it's been deleted. Of course it's been deleted. It's Of course it was deleted. Crazy. Cubone fan. Please unban me. W well, what's your, what's your username? I don't know. How? What's your username? Most pyramid schemes. Also, if you got banned, to be honest, you probably deserved it. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna lie to you. If one of the mods banned you, I trust them because they're they've been riding with me for a long time. They did the full moon ceremony. They took the blood oath. Uh, and if I banned you, for sure you said some shit that I that was either annoying me or was just straight up misinformation or you were just being a hater or some shit. I don't know. I I don't know. I, I don't even lie about this shit. I ban I ban people. I don't give a fuck. I do. If I don't like something, I just ban them. I, that's the truth. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, not not like a, I'm not out here banning crazy. I'm just saying, like, if you did get banned, that's why I don't like to. That's why I don't unban people, because I know that 
I'm so sparing with it that if I ban someone, I super, I know in that moment, I never want to fuck with this person. To be honest, like the likelihood that it was a mistake is probably zero. And then people will do this shit where they'll be like, oh, but I was just joking or, oh, you, I don't even want to hear it, bro. It's already done. It's already done. You know, I, I don't think, I don't think there's ever been a time where I ban someone and then I unban them. But this person's dropping bags. So maybe they actually, maybe I actually should unban them. But tell me what your username on YouTube is. I have no clue what your username is, Cubone. I'll review it. I'll review it. I'll review it. Anyways. Um, he did shout them out, Jasmine says. Okay, let me look. Ray Higdon is live. Let's go link up. You need a driver's license because MLM is your vehicle to residual income. Hello. Where's the bars? <laughs> bars. There you go. That, why you, sh why you, why should you do network marketing? All right, let's see. Apparently, Drake didn't shout them out. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. Nope. Nope. I'm not seeing it, y'all. Anywho, moving on. You want everywhere in the world, every continent, you can go to every beautiful city, every beautiful beach, every beautiful village, every beautiful place that you can imagine with network marketing. As long as there are people, you can do it. And even when there are no people via social media, you are able to, 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 to conquer the world. You can not only work where you want, you can work with whoever you want. You choose the people that you want to work with. You choose your leaders. So you choose the people that you love, that you, that you choose the willing. You don't have to work with the unwilling anymore. You don't have to work with the negative. You can choose your own people. And you know what? And that is for me an important thing. Everybody that knows me, you can work when you want. I'm not a nine till five guy. I don't like that. There are many times that I start working in the afternoon, but I go deep into the night. And when I travel... My YouTube name is Cubone Fan. Please unban me. Okay, fine. Cubone Fan, you've got me on the case. Cubone Fan's donated more consistently than anybody else tonight. So should we... Here's the problem with YouTube banning and why it's such a fucking headache for me to try to unban someone. Because... On YouTube, you unban people by going to settings, channel, and then you and then you go to, uh, where is it, community, and then you see your list of mods, but then you also see hidden users, and it's like, if you go to hidden users, it's not, for some reason, it's not in the order of, like, it's not in the order of people you just hid. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's random. And for me, over the years, I have, you know, there's been so many bots and shit that I've banned. I've banned, like, hundreds of accounts. MLM shills, uh, bots, etc. So for me to scroll through this list, and you can't control F either because it's like a weird, it's not like text. Like, the screen views it as like a menu. So I can't just control F and find the name either. It's like super, super inconvenient for me to even try and find find the person who's been banned. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'll just be very purposeful and intentional about who I ban. That way I never have to do this. So literally, look, I'll show you. I'll show you a little sneak peek here. Look, this is what it looks like when you have banned people, okay? This is, this is the list of banned folks. You have to like manually scroll through and try to unban. It's insane. So, you know. Not fun, but uh, yeah. So Cubone fan, I'll uh, I'm not gonna do it here on the stream, obviously, because that's madness. But I'll I'll write it down and and I'll look for you after the fact. And if I forget, just DM me or send me an email or something. Control F does not work on this. All over the world, it's massively important. It's massively important that I can work 
when I want. And I know a lot of people, for them, it is the ultimate freedom. Working where you want, with who you want, and when you want, ladies and gentlemen. Now. Ladies and gentlemen. With who you want, and when you want, ladies and gentlemen. Now. Think about, think about every awakening sunrise, you are able to start fresh again. You are ready for improvement. Every single sunrise, it's a new day with a new chance, a brand new day, ladies and gentlemen. And <coughs> you can find every single day, you can find and create... <laughs> BFH, bring from homeless, hilarious. Yeah, a higher improved level. I think it's business for home. Of confidence, ladies and gentlemen. And confidence in our industry is actually everything. <laughs> Lazies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> confidence is a combination of skills and belief. La combination. Ladies and gentlemen. And your skills, yeah, we, we, we do a lot of, of self development, we do a lot of turning inside Tretino, I did miss your dono but I got to it eventually you'll catch up without becoming a better person and you can get the skills an event like this is all about informing motivating and inspiring people and the better you become the better your results will be now at the other side confidence is belief ladies and gentlemen belief <laughs> So stupid. Sorry. My friend just sent me this tweet and it says, <laughs> I can't even read this. I can't even read this. Getting pussy is a logistical nightmare. <laughs> so fucking stupid. It's true though. I, I so I, I want to speak on this. I'm going to save this for Wednesday. I'm going to save this picture. And I, on Wednesday, I'm going to talk about why getting box is a logistical nightmare because it actually <laughs> it seriously is seriously okay all right here we go believe in the industry <laughs> believe in your product believe in the marketing <laughs> believe in yourself believe in your team and you know what with a good setup of skills and becoming the best version of yourself you will see that your belief improves you get better results and your belief improves. When those two things come together, your confidence will go to the roof and everybody is going to follow you. Now, how do you do that? LOL, Danny says, I, I would wear the shit out of this jacket and pants at TBH. So true. Giselle, you can go to every place and buy all the ugliest clothing. So true. Massively. Soundbite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P uh, timestamp that soundbite for me, Benjamin. I've got too much on my mind now between uh, un unbanning Cubone and you, uh, the soundbite and the Trump soundbite. I'm, I, I, somebody got to post it in Discord or something so to, to keep track. Sometimes having box is a logistical nightmare, but let's talk about it. Houseway, it's that bad out there, boys. All right, y'all want to talk about it? Let's talk about box, baby. Let's talk about you and me. This man is a cheetah girl. This is the grooming process. Yo, it is. Dude, I've said this before in uh, a more intricate way, but getting box is a logistical nightmare. Here we go, Danny boy. Danny boy, don't ever say something like this again. He says, just do Uber, bro. I got laid a good amount. I got laid a good amount, TBH. Back when I had a cock. No, dude, I drive. I have a car. But it's a logistical nightmare because on either side of actually doing the deed, the amount of nonsense that goes on, especially, dude, maybe it's just where I live. Maybe it's just the women I've dated. I'll tell you right now, in all honesty, I'm not, this is the opposite of me flexing. I have been on the longest celibacy kick of my adult life currently, okay? Because at this point in my life, when I'm fighting so many battles, legal shit, assassins, trying to work hard and make sure keep this cult afloat literally the the actual the human urge for me to like go on tinder or bumble or some you know just holler at girls 
is less than how much I don't want to deal with the logistical nightmare. Straight up. On either side of you actually dating a girl, let's, let's use that word. You gotta, first, you got to meet or in, engage initially, break the ice somehow. Talking, back and forth, talking, talking. Hey, how are you? What are you up to? How, how many siblings do you have? Nonsense. Then let's, you know, you're going to go on a date because you're not a, you're not a scumbag and you're not like a, it's, you're not going to hire, you, this is not a prostitution. So you go on a date. You got to go drive there, pick her up, more talking, more talking, dinner. Not saying that any of this is bad. All of this is beautiful. I love doing all of this stuff, but just at this current stage of my life, the willingness to do this is just non-existent, virtually non-existent. Like if it just happened and it was, I don't know, it just, I just can't be fucking bothered. I seriously just can't be bothered, which is crazy. Because as I, when I was younger, this was all I thought about. This was all I did. Oh, yeah, I'll holler at a girl, and then I'll go, and we'll have dinner, and we'll do that. I don't give a fuck, bro. I've seen it all. I've done it all. You know, I've lived a colorful life. I'm only 27. I used to work for a concert promotion company. I was with a lanyard, VIP backstage at every pop-in hip-hop show ever. I've seen a lot of things. I've done a lot of things. I've traveled. I've, I've done cool shit. I've met people. I, I just don't care. I'm sorry. I just don't care. Dating, going to going on a date, spending the money. The money not even an issue. Even the time isn't really the issue. But all of it combined, it's just too much, bro. It's just too much. And then on the opposite side of it, you know. For the legal fund, have a bullshit cash grab lawsuit coming my wow. way as well. T-U-M-B-S up de ting. Thank you. Appreciate you. The NYC... I missed what the last part of it was. Thank you, bro. Really appreciate you. That's you're a real G. And Streamlabs link in the chat for this wisdom that I'm dropping right now. Cause I'm about to I'm gonna cap this off with some great advice for, for gentlemen out there. NYC Alex, appreciate you, my brother. Is that a first time dono from NYC Alex? It is. Real G. Dude. Going on the meeting the girl, talking, going on the date, coming home, going on another date. You know, let's say the second day you, you know, you go back to somebody's house or something like that. Uh, afterwards, talking, more talking. It's just, I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. I feel like, you know, having to tell my story again, I just don't want to do it. I don't know what to say. I, I, it's not even that I'm bitter. Like, no, I've, in, in the past, you know, couple of years, past two years, the relationships that I have had have been the best relationships, uh, romantically speaking, that I've ever had. The most peaceful, the most loving, the most like low, low drama, beautiful relationships. But I just, I don't know. I just don't want to do it anymore. I just don't want to do it. I just, and I'm, it's not even like some black pill shit. Like, oh, I'm just not. No, like for sure, if it, if it's, if it's, if it fits into what I'm already doing. Going on a date, talking to a girl, fine. But I don't know, man. I've been down that road before. And, uh, you know, there was even recently, there was even a girl at my gym who had, like, come over and tried to talk to me about, I don't know. I could tell that what she was saying was innocent, but I could tell that it was her way of, like, initiating the conversation, this girl that I seen at the gym. And I just sort of, like... I just went through in my mind in like a minute, I just went through the whole process of our relationship, potential relationship. I was like, okay, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna meet this girl, we're gonna go on dates, we're gonna fall in love, or what, or you know, I'm gonna fall in love with her, or she's gonna fall in love with me, or both, whatever. And then eventually, you know, we're gonna have a fight about some stupid shit, and then eventually we're gonna break up, then I'm gonna have to go to a different gym. All for what? I've already, I've already seen the future, I've already gone through the whole thing in my mind. We're going to have we're going to have some great memories. We're going to go. I'm going to learn about her brother and her mom and her dad. And then we're going to go, uh, you know, it's going to be cool for a bit. And then we're going to have an argument over some dumb shit. And she's going to say, who's this girl that follows you on Instagram? And we're going to fight about it. And then it's going to be some nonsense. And then eventually we're just going to hate each other. Why, bro? Why? I get, you know, I get it. I've done it all. I've done it all. The worst feeling, the worst feeling one of the worst feelings, I shouldn't say the worst feeling, one of the worst feelings is 
liking somebody or falling in love with somebody and then later contrasting your memory of how much you love them with how much you currently can't fucking stand them. That's one of the worst betrayal feelings ever. You know, it's like a self-betrayal. It's like, damn, I remember telling, I remember when I was like in love with this person and I was just over the moon. Now I can't fucking stand them. That sucks. So for me, I would rather let it, you know, Drake has an amazing lyric on uh, his song, Is There More, which is arguably the best Drake song ever. He says, uh, I would rather have you remember me how we met. There's, there's more bars before and after it. But yeah, dude, I, what did he say? Especially when another girl is flicking up in my bathroom and they recognize the bathroom. All hell starts to break loose in my texts. I only tell lies to who I got to protect. I would rather have you remember me how we met. I would rather lose my leg than lose their respect. Yeah, bars. Yeah. If it's going to go, if it's, for me, past couple relationships I had, one of the reasons I say they, was, they were the best is because as soon as the first instance of bullshit reared its head, I was out. I just said, all right, you know, because I would rather, I know you're going to say like, oh, Marco, that's like a, you're, you're averse to conflict resolution. It's not that. I'm not averse to conflict resolution. I'm averse to conflict. And in basically every situation, uh, situationship or relationship I've ever been in, literally every single argument was unwarranted. Complete nonsense. I am on my namaste, loving kindness, peace and tranquility. My life, yeah, there's challenges. But if I was in a relationship, there's zero things, zero things that would ever need to be argued about. That's just the truth. There is zero things that ever need to be fought about between us. Maybe I have something going on that I want you to listen to and like help me with that I'm dealing with and vice versa. And I will do that. And, you know, but between us, there is no problems here. Between us, there's no problems. But, you know, every relationship, there always problems always arise somehow. Oh, well, I didn't like how you did this or, you know, who's that? Just making it up. So I just haven't bothered. I was like, you know what? I would rather, I would rather, you know, we've been in this honeymoon phase a few months. I would rather end it right now. And you think when you think back on me and this time, you only have positive memories. I refuse. I choose that in the past few years of my life. I've chosen that over. Let's play it out and keep re keep putting the popcorn back in the microwave once it's already been popped and it gets worse and worse every time. And then. Uh, fast forward a year and a half and we both hate each other. Come on, bro. Logistical nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, on either side of it, me and my friend, I'm not going to say who, but me and, me and one of my close friends, we have this conversation like multiple times a year. This is really, I should be really giving you these gems on the second stream. But we have this convo multiple times a year about like how do we end it in the most graceful way? Because it's a lose-lose. If you keep it going, then it's inevitable, at least in my experience, that both people are going to end up hating each other or, you know, I'm, I'm a young man. My friend is a young man. Neither of us are really like ready to settle down and get married. So here's the dilemma. I know I'm not trying to get married right now. So why would I even have a serious relationship right now? The problem is very few uh, girls are into spending time with a guy and getting and dating a guy if it's not going to eventually lead to boyfriend and girlfriend which is not which is hopefully going to lead to getting married so now it's like okay either i'm not going to date at all which i don't want to do that or i'm going to just be honest and risk you know uh being being a uh, you know being looked at as like oh he's not serious or whatever and you know what? Or option three, which is the worst fucking thing you can do, is continue and lie and be like, oh, yeah, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. Even though you're not really about it like that, you're just doing it so you can keep dating the girl or you're or God forbid you're cheating on the girl, which you sh I, I've never done and you should never do. So I've chosen the lesser of all the bad things. My what I've done is. Once we get to that point where the, the anvil drops and she says, all right, we've been seeing each other a little while now, do do do, commit it or quit it, I quit it. Because that's the, it's, the most, it's the most honest thing that I can do. No, I'm not trying to get married. 
Okay, well, you're not trying to, and you're not trying to waste your time continuing to see somebody who's not trying to be in a committed relationship. Fair play. I let you go. You know, be a gentleman. Kiss her on the hand metaphorically and ride off into the sunset. That way you can never, you know, she can never say, oh, well, you were, you know, you were a dog or you used her. No, we were seeing each other and it was no expectation and maybe she fell in love or whatever. And, and when she finally did ask me, so what do you see in the future? I tell the truth. The scariest thing. Tell the truth. Exactly. Carnivorous cows. I'd rather be honest from the jump and lose out on Pum Pum. Losing out on Pum Pum is a way lesser price to pay than having a girl go out into the world and say, that guy is a piece of shit. That will never reward you in the future. The karmic energy of women out there hating you, it just... Women have magical powers where they can project like satellite waves into the universe that, that makes people think you are a fuckboy. Trust me. I don't, know, I don't know how to explain it. They use their antennas inside their brain to like put that on you. So don't do it. Just be honest. You know? So that's, that's, uh, that's, why, I haven't been, that's why I haven't bothered because it's like I know that that's what it's going to lead to. You know? I know that that's what, what it's going to lead to. The ultimate... The ultimate um, exception is if I fall in love and I've changed my whole philosophy on dating at this current stage of my life and whatever. But for me right now, no, I don't see it, you know? Like, I'm 27. You could say that's old enough, sure. I'm not arguing that. But where I'm currently at in my life, the amount of r the risk that would be posed to, to my girlfriend or if I had children is too high for me to even justify it. Literally, assassins are looking for me. I couldn't, put, I couldn't put somebody through the stress of like, hey, I got sued again. Oh, hey, somebody tried to uh, assassinate me when I was out today, out in public, or I was at the red light and somebody took a picture of my license plate or something, you know? So, I don't know how to explain it, y'all. This is just the truth. I'm reading you guys' comments. And it's not that I'm even emotionally unavailable. I'm romantic. I'm a gentleman. I love love. I love, you know, it's just, I've never, I haven't, you know, me, this is why I say me and my friend multiple times a year, we have this conversation and the, the, the girls that either of us date, they can't understand it. It's like, but you like me. It's like, yes, I do like you. And in some cases, maybe it's even love. Maybe it's more than like, but I still got to let you go. It's, they don't understand that. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. So I've just... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've given up, but I put a pause on that pursuit. I haven't, I don't have Bumble and Tinder on my phone. I haven't been on those literally this entire year, 2023, haven't been on either of those. So, uh, and for girls too, y'all, some of y'all saying in the, um, in the, in the chat that it's the opposite, like the opposite is true as well. Like linking up with a guy is just not worth the effort. I feel you, man. I feel it, man. I need an anti-MLM girlfriend. Nah, I don't know. Um, you know. Stress will fuck with your hormones too, yeah. Fuck with your gut. Jasmine says, the song and dance is hard. The song and dance is hard. You know, I got to tell my story again. I remember, you know, I got to tell a girl about my nieces and how important they are to me and what they're like. And I, I had to do the same thing three years ago when they were younger. And it's like, damn, man. What I really wish is that I had just married my first girlfriend ever. Not that I, let me correct the phrasing of this. I, I wish that I would have just dated a girl who the first girl that I ever dated was the one forever. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying about my actual real life ex-girlfriend that I should have married her, my first girlfriend. I'm just saying if I could write the story, you know, my, in the ideal way, it would be that I met, you know, I married the first girl I ever dated and we were happily ever after. That would be the ideal. But unfortunately, you know. Or fortunately, it didn't go that way. So, wear blue, love red. Uh, I, I don't agree with the wording of your comment. He says, dude, men all over North America are tired of these broads. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. No, I don't think the juice is... I think the juice is worth the squeeze. It's a me thing. I'm not blaming it on these broads. I'm saying, for me, just where I'm at in my life right now, it's not, uh, it's not what I'm looking for. But hey, that's you, man. Um... You know, this turned into a different kind of stream real quick. 
I got to date a recovering MLM woman. Yeah, then I'm going to be, then people are going to say I'm a predator because I was taking advantage of someone who was struggling with their MLM experience and I'm the whatever, you know? You know? El Musima says, I can't be bothered about meeting guys. A lot of the guys I used to date, to date, I used to date made me do all of the traveling. Interesting. I miss Marco's Fin Dom streams. Yes, yes, Tratino. I think Tratino is still behind in the chat. Focus on yourself and the relationship appears. I think so too. Oh, my grandma's calling me. Fuck, I didn't text her back. She wants to know if I'm going to come over for dinner tomorrow. I'll call her right back. Um, yeah, there's a saying. The only thing you can do is for me is work on you. The only thing I can do for you is work on me. If she fits, she fits. What if it works out? Um, we're all reliving deja vu. That's why Islam is the only way for humanity. Hey, first mate, Nicolette Cutthroat, I, I, I would be open to learning more about Islam for sure. So what's your ideal situation? That's such a, see, that's why I haven't even bothered with this because there's no answer to that question that's going to satisfy a, a sane girl, I feel like. My, my ideal situation would, is totally unrealistic. My ideal situation would be, well, actually, the truth is my ideal situation would be that I fall in love to such a level that I am not even interested in what the future could hold, and I just get married, and that's it, happily ever after. In a more practical sense, my ideal situation is that uh, I date a girl who, for all intents and purposes, were boyfriend and girlfriend just without the uh, additional responsibilities of that because it wouldn't fit into the into the schedule. It would just be like a very casual thing. But of course I know that that's not realistic either because any girl that you're like dating and sleeping with or whatever, one of you is gonna fall in love. One of you is gonna have your heart broken. So it's like, anyways, I'm always weighing the options of being a bad guy. It's just like, how much of the bad guy do I wanna be? And I try to take the most, you know, the most noble and, and, and like honest route you know, but there's no way, there's no way, there's no simple way out. You know, it's tough. Even the last girl I dated, I, was, I, I, loved, I loved that girl. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. I even told her that. And it wasn't a lie. Well, if you love me, then why don't you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend? Seems like a simple thing, but it's really not. I'm sorry. It, 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 you know, I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I had to let her go. But you know what? I'm, I'm glad I did let her go. Because in my mind, we never had an argument. I'll look back on that time always with, with uh, reverence and gratefulness, you know? And uh, yeah, I, I, I can truthfully say that we didn't let it fizzle out to the point where we ended up hating each other and everything she did got on my nerves and vice versa. No, we had a great run and that was it, you know? Sounds like you need to travel with your partner right away so you can see them, the real them fast. Interesting. Back and forth is healthy. Relationships that have no fights, even about dumb shit, are the ones that divorce, honestly. Well, 50% of them divorce, so I don't know if that's true. Avoidant attachment style. Is that me? Are we doing therapy? Avoidant. LOL, when you accidentally have caps lock on. Avoidant attachment style. Uh, when their parent or main caretaker doesn't show responsiveness past providing essentials. Maybe, maybe that is, yeah, that is, that is what I had when I was a child, actually. My parents were like that. Just do, just go through the motions, buy things, you know? I, I honestly could never tell you, nah, this is not therapy. I'm not going to say that. Jay Velez, I messed around with a girl who had a boyfriend for so long. What the fuck? Did you know, though? That's scumbag shit, bro. I just cut it off since she couldn't decide. Nah, bro, that's greasy. Come on, bro. Never do that. Let's never do that. We all have telepathy, yep. Yeah. Penis flytrap <laughs> telecommunications. Um, let me read your comments. Marco, you can handle stress from MLMs but can't handle a woman upset. Ha hell hath no fury. Come on now. Also, I'm so family. I've been so family oriented this past year. You know, spend time with my aunties and my grandma and my nieces. And, you know, tomorrow I might go see a movie with my uncle. Like, you know, I ain't got time. I hold, Danny says, it's funny. I watched the whole YouTube couple break up because the girl didn't want to settle down and the guy did. Crazy. 
Alexander says, better being able to detach quickly than having the opposite problem of actively pursuing what is bad for you. Yeah, that's true. Danny, interesting comment from Danny that I want to expand on. Not every girl wants a ring. Some are fine with just commitment. I can't believe I'm even talking about this, but I have to talk about this. Wagwan Rachel. So there was a girl who, if you've been watching me for a long, a long time, like the past year or two, there's a girl who I was seeing last year who we'll call her Chinese girl. Okay. I, that's how I refer to her because she was Chinese and I don't want to give out her info. I love, to this day, I love this girl. And uh, it was like, she was like, I think the first, first girl that I was seeing like consistently after I got out of my last relationship a couple years ago. And uh, on paper, checked every box. I have no complaints, no complaints, nothing bad to say about her. And uh, the setup was perfect too, you know? Like I was so committed to like just working and being disciplined. Sometimes you get into a relationship and you just spend all your time with the person that you end up, you feel like you're losing yourself. Like you're not being as productive. You're not going to the gym. You're like, you know, the days are blurring together. And with this girl, I had the perfect setup. I, I committed to only seeing her once a week. You know, Friday or Saturday, whatever it was. Once a week, once a week, we would go all out. Where, where do you, you know, wherever you want to go, we'll go to a nice dinner. I'll make sure we have a reservation. I'll make sure that I, you know, ideally I know, you know, maybe I know the chef. I used to work at restaurants when I was younger. Maybe I know the chef. I used to work in nightlife. I know a lot of like server uh, people in the service industry and like, you know, whatever. I was like, once a week, we'll just paint the town red. You know, we'll just go out and, and uh, both look nice and, and, and have an amazing time once a week. And it was amazing. Once a week, I go pick her up. She's excited to see me because she hasn't seen me all week. Vice versa, same thing. Uh, she got all dolled up because I haven't seen her in a week. Vice versa, I make sure I'm looking good. I get a haircut, whatever, whatever. Do 100 push-ups. And uh, it's nice. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Eventually, how come you only see me once a week? I said, because. It's special once a week. I see you once a week. We're not sick of each other. It's beautiful. Well, of course, she's basically my point is one person in the relationship is only ever going to want more. You're never going to want less. So she tried to proposition me for two times a week. I said, no, because what happens if I, if I say yes to two times a week? Well, then why not three? Well, then why not four? Why not five? Well, then why not we just get married and live together and see each other every day? But then you're going to but then you're not going to wonder what was I doing for six days of the week when you didn't see me. There's no mystery. There's no excitement. There's no reason to make it special. There's no reason to like get dolled up. No, you know, once a week, that's the rule. Well, how come? I don't know. I'm busy. You know, be James Bond. I'm busy. I have work to do. Do do do. So now she's at home or at school or whatever. She was in university. I don't want it to sound like she, she was a child. She wasn't a child. She was in u university. Now she's thinking, what's he out there doing? He's out there doing some crazy shit. You know, to me, that was the way it should have been. And it was beautiful. And eventually, it came down to it. She said, yeah, you know, long term, what do you see? This and that. I said, I just want to continue it like this. She didn't want that, of course. She wants to, you know, only invest her time in something that's going to potentially be the future and getting married and whatever. And I totally respect that. I think that, that actually I like. I thought, exactly. That's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be wasting your time. You should be only seeking a meaningful relationship that has a long-term, uh, you know, outcome. That's not what I'm looking for right now, though. And prior to, prior to that point, she had never asked. So there was no deception or anything going on. When she first said something, when she first uh, unveiled her intent, I told the truth. And that meant that I, we had to go part ways. So we were on the same page, but I love that girl. And, but there, you know, I, would I rather let it, let it, let her go and have this great memory of the time we had together forever. And she knows that, you know, I, I never lied. We never had a fight. You know, I, I choose that. I choose that over, okay, yeah, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. And then a week into it, oh, you know, who's this girl that follows you on Instagram or who, you know, I found your ex-girlfriend's Instagram and maybe you think she's more attractive than me because she looks different than me. I've heard it all before. I've heard it all before, you know? So 
I chose that. That's my long answer. I'm sorry to uh, to say, Danny. That's my response to Danny's comment. Not every girl wants a ring. Some are fine with just commitment. Well, I, I respectfully disagree because commitment looks like something different to each person. And how many girls do you know that think seeing them once a week is commitment? Of course, they're not going to be okay with that, you know? And then it's just it just is a slippery slope once a week, then twice a week, then five times a week. Well, then you've been dating this girl for five times. You know, you've been dating this girl for a year. Why don't you just get why don't you just get engaged? You've been dating this girl for five years. Why don't you just get married? And then you fall into this like habit of just doing the things you think you're supposed to do. And uh, yeah, you know. What if grandma was calling for help? Don't say that, bro. I'm going to call my grandma. I think we get the gist of this Igor Alberts training, right? We don't need to, we don't need to continue this. Um, I, I, read a, I read a bar, too, that said, when you're wearing rose-colored glasses, red flags are just flags. That's a bar. If only it was this simple, said Bam. I know. Yeah, Giselle says you just need to communicate what you each want long term. That's the problem. Because if I came out on day one and said what I'm looking for long term, she'd be like, okay, I'm out. Because I know she's going to fall in love and I know it's going to be this whole saga. So I just, I guess you could say it's a lie of omission. I just don't say anything until I'm forced to reveal my hand. And when she asks outrightly, I tell the truth. And if she asks outrightly from day one, I also tell the truth. This happened to me actually back in like May. I was talking to this girl and she asked me, uh, she told me like out the jump, it was very forward. She was like, yeah, I'm looking to get married and have babies and this and that. And I don't want to uh, even go on a first date with somebody who like our values don't align. I said, I respect that. Well, maybe it's destined for us to never meet because uh, that's not what I'm looking for. And I told her the truth. And I think she was shocked by me telling the truth. And ironically, she ended up still wanting to go out any fucking ways. Go figure. So honesty is always the best way, you know, because the wor th that was the best thing for me to do was be honest, because if I had been a fuck boy and said, oh, and lied and said, oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, too, just so that I could hook up with her or something. And then eventually you tell the truth and say, no, actually, that's not what I'm looking for. Well, now it's like now you're a liar because now, well, you told her before that that's what you're looking for. And now you're pulling the rug out and changing your mind. Never do that. Always Set the set the the expectation on day one, okay. Under promise, over deliver. So, Danny says it sounds like you're afraid to change for someone, but part of the joy and commitment is the mutual change in both parties. Maybe, I'm a young man. Maybe, ladies, do not slide in DMs at this time. Don't slide in DMs with the nonsense. Know where I'm at. Hey Marco, do you want to go on a date? Do you want to hang out? Uh you know, this afternoon? Sure, of course, I'd love to. But if you ask me, I'm gonna be honest. You know, I'd rather be the bad guy for being honest than be the bad guy because I lied, straight up. She wanted to spend more time with you because she enjoyed your presence, a true goon. Yeah, but you get me too. <sighs> you know. You looking stressed already, Straight, stay single. 7-Eleven manager, it doesn't sound like you're ready for a relationship. I'm not. Yep. Yep. By the time you're getting three plus missed calls in the middle of a day, it's a wrap. Yeah, dude. Having a girlfriend is just crazy, bro. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Blank. Where are you? Blank. Did you eat today? What did you eat? Did you drink water? Every time I've been, every time I've exited a relationship, there's a day that happens usually a week or two after the breakup where I'm doing something. I'm, I'm headed from somewhere, going to somewhere else, just getting shit done. And I have this revelation where I'm like, damn, this is what it feels like. I'm just like being so productive. This would have never been able to, this would have never been possible if I was in a relationship still. If you, if you have a girlfriend, any moment that you have that isn't set in stone as you being busy doing something, sh the expectation is that you're spending the time with her, at least in the relationships I've had. And with me being a YouTuber, well, all of it is subject to change. I could, I could, 
I could decide not to do something this morning and do it this evening. I could always switch it around. So that puts me in even more of a tough position because it's like there's never anything I can say that justifies saying no to the... Anyways. You know. All the guys are agreeing with me. <laughs> you know. We should ask Igor for advice. He's been married multiple times. Yeah. 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 You need to be honest earlier. Like when? Like I'm going to be that weirdo who on the first date is like, just so you know, I'm only looking to spend casual time with you. And even though I know in my, in my heart you're going to fall in love as we continue, uh, you can never ask me for – come on, bro. I'm not a villain. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not evil. You know. <laughs> Did you drink water is fact. If she brings you peace, I'd say it's worth it and understands that. Life is simple. I don't know, man. My life is simple and, and well, it's, it's definitely not peace. Well, at least it's on my terms. At least it's, you know, disorderly on my own accord. Maybe getting into a relationship brings me peace. But not getting into a relationship definitely keeps the peace. Do you know what I mean? If I get into a relationship, it might go either way. It might not be peaceful. It might be peaceful. In my experience, it would tell me, my experience would tell me that it's not going to be peaceful uh, eventually. So why not just keep the stasis of peace that I have right now? You know. No, nah, not a whole year. Usually it's a couple months, Giselle. Usually... Usually the, the relationship goes a couple months and the girl doesn't say anything because I think, you know, usually what happens is the girl falls in love and she thinks, she thinks or she hopes that, I'm, that the same thing is going to, like I'm also going to fall in love, which I might. And then eventually when she asks me, so what are you saying? What's the long-term intention here? Whatever, whatever. She hopes that I say, yeah, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend or let's get married and whatever. To which she's going to be like, yay. And then the sliding scale of let's spend more time together, blah, blah, blah. So when that happens, I just say, even though I might love the girl, I just say, yeah, I just say no. You know, I just say no. Boring. Yes, Shoe Murphy. It's like that one Drake song. Uh, you and the Six is the song you're thinking of. It's like that one Drake song where he says, I'm sure she's a good girl, but she don't want this life. Woo. What's the lyrics? That, that song, literally, I listen to that song often because it, and that's my favorite bar from it. It keeps, it, it puts it so precisely. There's a Drake lyric for every, every moment, I swear to God. What'd he say? Um, what'd she say? Here, I'm looking at the lyrics right now. This is such a bar. I hate it. He, okay, this is Drake talking to his mom. And look, I hate it when you hate on all my girlfriends and assistants, always convinced that there's someone better, like that girl from your gym who trains you. I know you want to arrange it. You told me she's free Thursday, and I'm sure that she's an angel, but she don't want this life. The time ain't right. Maybe one day, but even one day with us is the time of a life. Woo! Come on! Come on! Not that I'm living a crazy lifestyle like Drake, but, you know, maybe one day, but even one day with us is the time of her life. Such a fucking incredible bar. So crazy. Go listen to You in the Six. Crazy. Thank you, Shoe Murphy, Murphy, for knowing your Drake. You like that? Well, go on, Joseph. A couple months is also too long. Also, ladies, we just need to just bring it up earlier too. Less wasted time for both. Yeah, I respect that. Hey, and you know what? You know what's crazy? P both people, both guys and girls be lying. On Tinder and shit, you know how it says what you're looking for? And it's, it, you, you know, you can say like long-term casual, whatever. People be lying on that. I talked to one girl from Tinder like two years ago who said that uh, her, her bio said looking for a serious relationship. When I was talking to her, she said, I'm actually not looking for a serious relationship. I just put that so that dudes wouldn't be like, you know, I just wouldn't be getting fuck boys who are trying to like, you know, have casual flings. And I'm like, but you are looking for a casual fling. So what do you mean? Insane. And then also dudes be lying and saying that they want a long-term relationship, but just lie, making it up, lying, so that they can get with the girl who thinks that they want to settle down, but they don't actually want to settle down. They just want to smash. It's crazy out here. It's a minefield, bro. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. Crazy shit. Me who's waiting for a man who was obsessed with me until I even wanted to get married. I do not compute. So funny. Let's ask losing fortunes about this topic. Back to you, Peter. Peter and Scott are going to talk about this for sure. I love when I do like a four hour stream and I just, I look at the timestamp and I'm like, oh fuck, that's too long. But then I also know that Scott spent a full four hours watching it. <laughs> you know. You ever see people saying different things on different apps? My favorite thing, <laughs> my favorite thing is when I go on Tinder after not being on it for like a year and I see the same girl who I saw on it a year ago and I'm like, damn bro, like still? <laughs> or, when I, or when I see a girl on one app and her pictures or her bio is different on another app, I'm like, okay, I see we're A-B testing the proper bio and profile pic. I like that, I like that. So funny. I don't even know how we got on this, bro, but shout out to Chinese girl. Just, you know, there's a song. I actually have a song. I think this might have been one. This one was one of the last songs I put out before I took my little music hiatus and got back to doing uh, and got back to doing um, anti MLM content. The song is called Don't Ruin This, and it's about exactly what we're talking about. You can search this song on Spotify. Don't ruin this. Marco, and uh, it encapsulates, it's maybe my best, uh, the best I've ever done at writing a verse that encapsulates exactly how I'm feeling about a certain topic. Um, yeah, it's called Don't Ruin This, and it's about exactly what we're talking about now, you know? So who knows? I'm a young man. Maybe when I get older, Joseph knows the song. Maybe when I go, get older, um, it'll be different. But man, I know that Chinese girl still loves me too, man. And I still love her, you know? She's probably watching this. She was, a couple of months after I stopped seeing her, she was texting me, hope you're doing well. I was like, fuck, the devil is tempting me because he wants me to go back selfishly to link up with this girl again. But I know I'm just gonna end up breaking her heart. So let me not do that. And then like a year later, I wake up one Sunday morning and there's a 2 a.m., Fa you know, uh, not FaceTime, Instagram video call, missed call from Chinese girl. I was sleeping soundly and uh, I just seen it and I, you know, I was just like, damn, man, I know she's still thinking about me. I know she's out there right now thinking about me. It's crazy shit, you know. Chinese girl are one true queen. She, I, and I just know... I, I laugh at this because I know that if I was putting myself in the girl's shoes, I wouldn't understand this either. I'd be like, what are you talking about, Marco? Like, this is crazy. If you love the girl, just date her. Well, it's not that simple, my dear. You know? My favorite thing is when dudes delete their account and make a new one just to get the new here tag. I've never seen that. I didn't know that. High altitude potatoes and nothing burgers forever. Let find out you're going into that red pill, blue pill community. Huh? Appreciate you, Benjamin. Yeah, we will manifest it. It's not easy. It is not easy, nor is it simple. Those late night callbacks, always heartbreaking. I know. Fuck. And you know what? Thank God that I was asleep. She was calling to say, you pay me now. Thank God that I was asleep. Because if, if I had been up on a Saturday night at 1 a.m. and she called me, you know what it is. Saturday night at 1 a.m., you already know what that's about. And I know when that hotline bling. That can only mean one thing. It only means one thing, my friends. And I might have been tempted in my, in my moment of haram weakness. I might have been tempted to say, yeah, come over. But it would have ended in tears, of course. Of course. And I'm not that guy. I refuse. I refuse to, you know, if a girl cries, if I'm dating a girl and she cries for like reasons related to us, it's over. I'm sorry. If I'm with a girl and she cries because of work or because of her family or something, I'm right there. I'm here. My shoulder is yours. Use both. But if it's something to do with her and I, it's over. I don't know. I just feel like it's tainted. Now, these days, I have such a different perception of shit. You know, I refuse for there to be any blood in the water ever, ever. And I know it's unrealistic, but, you know, that's why I'm that's why I'm not 
That's why I'm not currently in the market. And that's why I'm not currently in the in the in the business. <sighs> Chinese girl Scott and Peter. Peter and Dominic all have dreams about Marco, yeah. 2 a.m. drives are crazy. What if you did <laughs> Jasmine, you silly, silly, silly girl, Jasmine. Jasmine says, what if you did something wrong for real? <laughs> Jasmine. It's me. Jasmine, exactly. That like totally. Our cult leader doesn't do anything wrong. Exactly. <laughs> I got to end this stream, you guys. This got way too personal. MLMs are bad. All right. Let's talk. We're going to talk about multi-level marketing and the tactics they use. We're not here to talk about me and Chinese girl. Fuck. I don't think I talked about Chinese girl on this channel like all like all this year. I've Only personal shit I've been talking about is on my second channel. So. All right, y'all. <laughs> Too much. Appreciate you. I got to call my grandma back. Peace. Marco. 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 <sighs> Thanks, Marco.